only thing we have to fear is beer itself. Beer. So many choices. Oh, we no function beer well without. Woohoo! Beer! And welcome to another episode of Beer Busters, where we're going to bring you the news and reviews of some wonderful brews. My name is Dan Baker, joined by my co-host and brewologist, Steph Hafner. And of course, the Demented and Fermented. I forgot. One name. episode, and you can't remember. I can't remember my name. Reunited I missed an episode. I don't know what's going so on. <laughs> we're back together. It's been a while since the three of us have been at the table together. I know we've done two yeah. whole episodes with, like, partial crew. Yeah. We need to knock that off. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> Yeah, let's knock that <laughs> off. Uh, but we are back together, and uh, I think, Wayne, this will go down as the farthest we have ever had to travel from. I know, right? Whoa. It was so grueling. Go fuck yourself. It took a total of three minutes for us to drive here, uh, and we only drove because we had to bring the equipment. So that means we're in South Philly. We're at uh, 19th and Passion. We are at Brewery Arse. I had to make sure I was going to say it right. <laughs> you looked at Sean for I know, I was like, is there a smile, is there a nod, is there a grimace? Said it I don't good. know. Said it good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, ARS. Ars. Yes, through Ars, through ARS. Um, apparently, the pron- the correct pronunciation is Ars, as a uh, member of your family likes to make sure to point out if I understand. You got it. Okay. But from Brewery Ars, we have with us Sean. Sean, thank you, sir. One half of the One brewery. half of the brewery, yes. Uh, but of course, that's not all. We have joining us from Liberty Brew Tours as well. We have uh, John Keller and Micah Goldsberry. Gentlemen, all of you, thank you for being on the show tonight. Thank You're you. Welcome. I've never been invited to something, so this is really big for me. <laughs> I'm glad I could be here for like it. you don't even know. This is like the <laughs> pinnacle of my life. I, I'm glad I can make that happen, but I'm also sorry that I this know, is the right? pinnacle. <laughs> you guys are the best. Oh, He's shucks. pretty excited. Well, thank you. Oh, shucks. You did bring us a gift as well, so thank uh, you for he that. He brought me a gift. Oh, no. He Damn. said it right before he got here. was for Thanks. all of us. He was just pandering to you when he handed us. Well, well, I he brought knows it for all you guys, but I know stuff like... The spicy beer, so... If it's a spicy beer or a Pilsner, secretly, it's just for me. Sorry. Uh, the and you're just being nice to share. Sorry. Yeah, right. The sun is still up, but uh, Steph is already throwing shade. Oh, <laughs> she always does. Yeah. It's, it's been our entire lives we've had to put it's up with It's always that. shady with yep. Steph. Yes. Uh, it is really hot outside. That could outside. be my reality show. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know there's other stuff I have to mention, but I need this beer. What, uh, what beer are we sipping on? This is Wayne's Pale Ale. Wayne's hey, Pale Ale. Yeah. Wayne's Pale Ale. I just remembered my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, unfortunately didn't name it after you. Sorry, uh, no, I apologize, okay. but it's that's named right. after my uh, my dad. Aww. what a coincidence! That's also our dad's yeah, name too. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I'm a junior. It's nice. It's a good name. Um, it's a good name. My dad has Parkinson's, so we oh. donated portions of the oh. par- sales to par- um, Michael J. Fox Foundation. Oh, that's cool! Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and like, if people that are listening want to donate, where can they go to donate? They can just drink the beer. Just drink the beer, <laughs> or they can donate to the Michael Google J. Google Michael J. Yep. Fox Foundation. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Drinking the beers are a good way to go. It's a really good beer. It is. Thank you. Yes. And it's a it's a balmy summer day today. Oh, it's and this here. is uh, quite refreshing. It is very refreshing. Yeah, it's nice and uh, nice and light and crisp. It's a nice little uh, back end flavor to it. I- what I like is it's a good balance between um, refreshing and easy drinking, but it still has that in your face hoppiness that we want, of course. Mm-hmm. So, well done. A good homage to your father. Tapped it today, so it's super fresh. All right. Ooh. Nice. Even Hashtag better. Fresh. Yeah, I think it's it's one of the best like pale ales in the city. I mean, you know, when you think of Philadelphia, you know, it's like Yards Pale Ale and stuff like that. But when you're going like, uh, what are the trending pale ales? You have like Hop Hands and stuff. Like this is a top contender in my mind as far as like, oh yeah, you know, across the city. And is this one of uh, one of your original beers, or is this a newer creation? Um, we come up come up with a new beer every week. So okay, I was going to say because like change. it seems to always be changing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I've, I've seen this on tap here a few times, yeah. at least a few times. Yeah, we try to keep it uh, at least one or two beers that people know. Right. Yeah, but that's we, good. We're so small that we try to change it up, keep more customers coming in. So. Yeah. It's what the people want. It's it true. What the people yeah. Want. yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll get into all that in a little bit, but of course we have to remind the internet out there where you can uh, where you can reach out to us. So there's always at Beer Busters on Twitter and Instagram. There's always Facebook, Beer Busters Podcast. And don't forget that phone number, 805-991-BEER, 805-991-2337. Which Wait, apparently some people anyone? have been leaving messages, yeah. and you have been hiding that I from me. Been getting them. Does anyone ever Seriously? call they even that logged number? In yesterday. Yes, people do, and people tell me that they've left messages, and I'm like, well, Wayne didn't ever. Is tell it me. his cell phone? 
We it's, didn't tell it's you because he doesn't voice. have access. Oh. Yeah, it's Google Voice. So you can't get D pics? Oh. <laughs> I mean, we could. Oh, all right. I mean, it's good good to I mean, know. God, it's, it's 2000 and friggin' 18. You can just email dick pics to us. That's true. Yes, yeah. email. <laughs> Please don't. Email your dick pics to Wayne no, at beermusterdpodcast.com. Luckily, we don't have that Snapchat Send account Send your anymore. dick pics to dear old captain. <laughs> <laughs> I like to dress mine up in like different hats and stuff. So really make it artistic. That's see, that's oh, how you cram it. That's yes, yeah. I what, have what not were we consumed talking about? enough beer yet. I'm sorry, guys. You can kick me out of the podcast. Was it better <laughs> no, when I was gone? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Was it, was it easier without me? <laughs> it was weird having to come up with an inebriometer for last call. Oh yeah. Although I must give a shout out. Rich uh, did amazing really with did. Happy Fun Time Games. I don't. I know haven't you, listened yet. Oh, you have not. No. You have to listen. I was very, very proud. It did just drop today. It yes, did just as drop of this today. Recording. Yes, that is a fact. Yes, but uh, speaking of the last call, you could be part of the last call audience if you go to Patreon.com/slash/beerbusters where uh, you can keep this train rolling a little bit. Yep. Donate as little as a dollar a month. It gets you access to all sorts of cool behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, you get your name uh, mentioned in the last mm-hmm. call. Le- patron roll patron call. Patron roll call. That yep. thing, if you yep. donate at a certain mm-hmm. level. Yep. Um, onesies may or may not make a return at yep. some point as well for certain. Not in the summertime. Not in the summertime, yeah, no. no. Um, Hell no. Uh, podcasting ain't cheap, and people don't buy fucking T-shirts. So yeah, go to patreon.com slash So your choices are... Go to Patreon or buy a shirt. I mean, throw us a buck. It's fine. We appreciate yeah. it. And while yeah. we're plugging, um, June 23rd, join us at Effort Brew Fest. Yes, I cannot wait oh, for that. Oh, that's right. Yes. I think that's everything. Oh, and uh, Lit It's Beer Fest is coming this fall. Oh, cool. Uh, sep- last Sunday in September. Uh, so uh, look for us there as well. Let's do this. Yep. Uh, one last thing. We don't often ask uh, for a lot, but if you think of it. I don't know. I kind of feel like we just asked We just for a did. Lot. I know. One last thing. If you're not willing to give us money. Um, Whatever podcast platform you are listening to us on, uh, just you know, throw us a review, uh, a little rating. Five stars. Five stars. Whatever their, their maximum star level is. Not like five out of 17 or anything, but like... Rate us like we're a Pilsner, people. Yes. Five stars only. Don't rate us like a Pilsner <laughs> if you only drink New England IPAs. But <laughs> That's not, not, gonna, not good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Steph, I heard that. I'm on a mission. Well. I rate every craft Pilsner five stars, no matter what. You I'm on a mission. That. It's the most Stay boring style. Oh. You're just... You're okay. rocking it. I'll Shots. fight you later. It's Shots Mike, fired. it's a good thing you're you in between them right now because that would get I will ugly fight otherwise. fight you later. Anyway. I'll try and keep them apart. But Luckily, I'm, like so, <laughs> I'm so sweaty right now. I know. Yeah, it's just not worth, not <laughs> worth it's gonna gonna be the You may be too slick. My fist will slide. slide right, right, right off you. <laughs> oh, God. Well, on that note. It's been about a month since we recorded, and there's a lot that have happened, so I had to try to boil this down to the most important stuff. Uh, so a follow-up to a follow-up to a follow-up. Anyone want to guess what this is? Vagina bear? No. The stone thing? Boom. Yeah. There we oh, go. Oh, enough already. Yeah. The latest development in stone brewing still ongoing happening. trademark infringement lawsuit against Miller Coors came yesterday as the San Diego Craft Brewery is now seeking an injunction to present, prevent the sale of Keystone products in which the word stone has been isolated. In the court filing, uh, first cited by attorney Brendan Palferman, who runs a website called TrademarkYourBeer.com, Stone argues that an, inju- yeah, exactly. that an injunction is necessary due to the rebranded Keystone cans, quote, causing actual and irreparable consumer confusion, wreaking havoc in the market and causing sales to skyrocket as consumers associated with stone. Actual and yep. irreparable. Yep. Yes. Ooh. So, I, I actually, um, Stone won, essentially. In a... Side note to Stone, if uh, I saw this on social media today, they actually cut ties with the punk band No FX yep, that because was of be their a, irreparable next. comments to uh, about the Las Vegas shooting. Yep, which yep that was going to be the, the next story. Oh, wow. Uh, it's Buzzkill. Cool. It's cool. You're Spoiler on top of your current alert. events. I like it. Uh, one last thing about the, yeah, about the um, um, injunction and all. Stone has added that it is willing to allow Miller Coors 30 days to sell through its existing inventory. How nice of that. That's very generous. Yeah. Uh, and everyone in Western PA cheered. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, in a other, fire sale. Yes. In other stone brewing news, the brewery has pulled its sponsorship of the Punk in Drublick Beer Festival and ceased production of its collaboration with NoFX after members of the punk band uh, made insensitive comments about the victims of last year's Las Vegas massacre. In a statement announcing the termination of the relationship, Stone called the comments made during No Effects performance last weekend insensitive and indefensible. Uh, we respect punk rock and the DIY ethos for which it stands, the company said. To us, it means standing up for things you believe in and fearlessly committing to what's right. And it is for that reason that Stone Brewing is immediately disassociating ourselves from the band No Effects. They added, punk rock is cool. These callous comments were the furthest thing from it. 
So that beer is no longer going to be made, and there will no longer be stone on the Pumpkin Drum Festival. Yeah, well, Wheaton, you I better watch your mouth. If they get rid of Woot Stout, I'm going to cry. Will Wheaton is too innocent Woot Stout is going <laughs> off, really. I literally just heard Wheaton! that story. All right, there's no need to yell into the microphone. <laughs> it's a microphone. Um, but well, no, you still have to project with microphones. I don't pick everything up. I don't think encourage him. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, sorry. I love that you're the calm one. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> no, you're the calm one. No, out of these two. Out of these two. <laughs> Uh, one last thing I saw that was pretty cool that I wanted to throw out there. Um, celebrating diversity has always been an integral part of Bell's Culture, Bell's Brewing. And this summer, uh, there are 16-ounce cans of a beer called Sparkleberry, which will join the celebration. Bell's has shared a first look at the packaging of one of the newest additions to its 2018 release calendar, Sparkleberry Ale. It doesn't have glitter in it, does it? No. It's a raspberry Belgian-style triple ale. Uh, it's going to be in four packs for the first time this month in June. At least I didn't see anything about glitter in it, and I really hope not. Laura like, Bell would not let that happen. Yeah, no, it, she's too good at what she does for I that. like my beers like my elbows. Glittery. Your elbows Wait, are glittery? No, it's a Parks and Rec reference. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. For, the, go for the, 30, the 30 people that got that. No, I, I got to go know. back and rewatch it. It's been a while. Uh, hey, that's like 100% of our audience, so. There Cheers. you go. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly tart and effervescent, Sparkleberry has a ruby red hue, an ABV of 9%, and is brewed with, of course, raspberries. Stop putting 9% beers in 16-ounce cans. Mm. <laughs> nah, keep doing it. Uh, cans and cakes will ship to all states Bell's distributes to, uh, but will be very limited. So I think that's really cool, and the reason this comes up is because it is celebrating uh, pride and diversity among the community and, of course, humanity as a whole. So kudos to them for uh, kind of taking a stand with that. Uh, a fun uh, fact about Iceland, um, they... <laughs> There's a transition here. Uh, they have Pride Week there, and the one brewery makes a Pride beer. Oh, cool. And when I was there, I got to try the 2016 and 2017 iteration of it. Oh, nice. So, yeah. What kind of beer? Yeah, was it good? It was gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, no. It was, uh, I don't remember what it was, uh, but it, it was pretty good. Yeah. This is a few years ago. It was so good, I don't remember. Sean, no, I mean. Are you still worried about me? <laughs> <laughs> He's caught up. <laughs> No, it was it was pretty good, but it was we were glad because we went to the brewery and they told us about it and we found this beer bar that had it, so we were like super pumped. Oh yeah, that is all I had in the uh, world of news that I thought was worth mentioning. Uh, but that brings us to the topics at hand. We are in South Philly, Brewery Ars. We do have the guys from Liberty Brew Tours here. Uh, now, I know Brewery Ars have been around for what about a year and a half at this point? Yep, year okay. and a half. I was here probably like the weekend or maybe the weekend after you opened. And right off the bat, I was super impressed with what you guys had on tap. And everything I've had since then has just been phenomenal. And this was my more or less go-to spot for I need a quick growler fill. Let me walk over and and get something. So on more than one occasion, I've gotten really drunk off your beer. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what uh, what prompted starting your own brewery? Uh, I think it was just like every other home brewer or, you know, every other person that starts a brewery. We ended up, we were just home brewing like crazy. Yeah. And it was just uh, every weekend. You know, we had our usual nine to five jobs, and just every Saturday, just homebrewed, 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 homebrewed. Um, it got to the point where we had four fridges in our house. <laughs> so one for food, one for primary fermentation, one for secondary <laughs> fermentation, and That's then a me. Yep. Key, uh, you know one for the kegs. Right. Yep. Yeah, um, we're we're at two two and a half at this point. Wayne and I live together uh, over here. We've got the one in the kitchen for food, one for beer and like overflow drinks from the other one, and I just bought a kegerator four. that I haven't really hooked up yet. Kegerators nice. are great for lagering too. Ah, good to know. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Dan, Dan's going to start brewing beer. I'm oh, God. Too, I'm told you, you're 10,000. Far, far too stop. lazy. You're 10,000. Check in. So when you say we. My twin brother and I. Which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So I have yeah. to ask identical or fraternal? Uh, my mom said that we're fraternal, but no one believes us. So <laughs> I, I don't know what the. I say I'm, I'm lefty, he's righty. I, we don't. We, we look alike? Uh, yeah, they do look alike, but Sean has this mane right now that makes him look like <laughs> goddamn Mufasa. Uh, <laughs> that is just... I know, like the more no, he's more of a Simba than a Mufasa. He is, okay, I agree. He is more of a Simba. But uh, when he's been growing this out, my God, it's majestic now. <laughs> I don't it do well with twins. When I see twins and I don't know them, I can't... I, when I see Sean We look Andy, a lot alike. I can't tell them apart. Yeah, but if yeah. I've known them for a while, maybe I can tell them apart. Do you have the same personality, right too? No. Not at no, all? No, he's very serious. I know I look sound serious right now, but <laughs> compared to these two, like I, I do, but uh, no, he's like it he's, is all relative. He's yeah. like really like so straight. We all have experience with owning businesses with family members, and I know it's for the do, three yeah. of us, you know, we all bring different expertise and different talents to the table, and we've naturally divided this business into three parts, and it works. Are there certain areas that you just take care of, and he takes care of the rest? Yep, uh, our, it's divided in two. 
um, for myself and my brother. Uh, I run the business. Uh-huh. Um, all of the social media. I designed uh, the logo. I do all the artwork. So every every week we come out with a new beer. I draw a new artwork. So I my I use colored pencils like I did when I was like f- five. <laughs> um, do you have a pencil sharpener? I do. I have two of them. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then my brother runs the brewing side. So what's the best colored pencil then? I use Prisma colors. It's just the brand that oh. I use. I was Prisma. expecting I a forever. color. Like chartreuse. No, I was color. expecting a Bird number. Color. I, don't with Ross, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I just use Prisma colors. Prisma just colors. The type of color pencil. Yeah, that Fantastic. I, yeah. Hey, Prisma colors, if you're listening, uh, you can sponsor uh, Brewery ARS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Brewery Ars. Whichever you prefer. Or Ars. I thought we, I thought we settled that. <laughs> he wasn't listening. <laughs> Interesting. I have so many questions about colored pencils, but I, I feel know, like I we should stop talking go about back to pencils. beer. Yeah. And pencil <laughs> sharpeners. Yeah. So how many of the beers that... Uh, now, I, I know you don't really have a, a standard set of beers, and you say you're always releasing new ones, but how many of them are uh, beers that were either inspired by or were beers that you guys homebrewed together before the brewery opened? I would say like a handful are, but right now it, that's kind of just... Yeah, I would say a handful when we started. Um, but like the porter on tap, uh, we tweaked... We tweaked that porter to death um, because there's not a lot of porters out there, and we really wanted a really damn good porter. Um, doesn't really sell right now in 100 degree yeah, weather. Yeah. yeah, it's a little warm. But porters are good for any time of the year. Is that our I agree beer? with that. But it's a dry yeah. porter. It's a drier so. porter. But yeah, right now we're just kind of yeah we're coming up with a new beer every week. Um, and my brother's day job, he sells hops. Oh, oh okay. so he works for the largest hop company in the United States, um, Hop Union. Mm-hmm. So he's the regional sales manager in the Mid Atlantic. So his job is going to breweries every day and selling them hops and drinking beer. So is does that give you an in? I was just going to say, is there like a, a conflict of interest there? Do you have to wait on the there? same lists? <laughs> um, I mean, we're not. So the way it works is the larger breweries go over during the hop harvest and buy on contract. Yeah. yeah. So we don't buy hops on contract. So we buy on spot. Right. Which is the open market. Right, right, right. Um, why do you why do you keep winking when you say that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was waiting to be like, and so how does it actually work? <laughs> no, that's how it works. I mean, my bre- we we know a lot more about hot, you know, than the average brewery of this size. Right. Um, so we're you know, it, you it, that it, advantage. it helps. Yeah. yeah I mean, my bro- every um, what is it? Uh, during the hop harvest, he has to go out there for a month, and every day he goes with a different brewer, and they pick the hops that they want from the Mid Atlantic. So it it. You know, he knows a lot more than the average brewer. Right, right. So it helps us, you know, which hop tastes good this year. Because every crop year, the hop is different. Right. Mm. And even that particular hop that year, um, that particular lot from lot, lot, you know, lot to lot is different. Um, so it's really, um, yeah, it's, it's beneficial. Um, we know a lot about hops here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know a lot about hops. We know a lot about hops. So speaking about the families that own businesses together, how did you guys come up with this crazy idea to start Liberty Brew Tours? Um, well, uh, my, my, me and my brother, uh, Jeff, who, uh, you know, sadly, he couldn't be where, here Where is he? Us. Very yeah. sadly. He, no, he's just... He in a better place? No, yeah, no, he's oh, not yes. dead. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Don't no, assume he, things. No, he's not dead. He's uh, just home with his wife and the kids, which is probably a better it's, place. It's probably dead. Is it uh, air-conditioned? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that, <laughs> that means it's a better place. So yeah. Uh, so no, he was he was between jobs. It's not like he was hard on his luck. He's a database programmer, so he basically has, and he's very highly uh, qualified one at that. So he was um, between jobs, and he's like, "Yo, I have this Wednesday um, before I start work. Um, let's. I have this route planned out. Um, this is about you know four, six, oh, 2014. Um, and he's like, let's go out uh, and let hit, hit up all these breweries. So I was like, do I take off work? And so we went out. We started at um, uh, what's it's the big um, uh, buffet place up in PA. Um, Shady Maple. Shady Maple. Yeah. Smor- yeah. The smorgasbord. Yeah. Yeah. So we went there, got a good B- base B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-B-
Like, this is crazy. And I hope like uh, we can't get in trouble now for what we did then. I think uh, it's statute of limitations. Yeah. You're fine. And if it's on a podcast, it doesn't count. That's... Uh, I think that's legal. Right? That's, <laughs> that's, that's law. Um, we're, we're experts. No, we so we, we spent the whole day. We didn't get back till like ten o'clock at night. And the next year, we were like, "Hey, Micah, do you want to come with us?" So we did that. And then I'm talking to our fourth empo- like our first fourth per- person in the group. It's our uh, like designer and like photographer Juan. Uh, it's a guy I play hockey with. And I was talking about it, and I was like, yeah, "Like, why don't we do this for people? Like, drive them around to the breweries?" And that's literally how it started. I mentioned it and to, to, to to transition from. From that to when I went with them the following year, we, you know, we did it and it was a, a hell of a day. We went, we sampled like what 60, 80 yeah. beers. It was it was ridiculous. I mean, between the three of us, you know, we would get a flight and we would each take like a sip of it, but we sampled that many beers. And I had gone on a similar brewery tour in uh, Boston, and I was like, you know, there's nothing like this in Philly, and. When I took what we did versus what I went on, I was like, we need to do something like this in Philly. And so we got our, we put our heads together and we came up with, at the time, we called it Philadelphia Brew Tours. And we've since evolved from Philadelphia into Liberty, but that's how we got our start. And mm-hmm. we, we took our, our immense love for being ridiculous with going to brewery to brewery to brewery to brewery and putting that together and taking people with us and taking people to these local breweries that we love to go to and it just sort of was born out of that so what's the difference between me paying my husband and renting a van and having him drive me and my drunk friends around to different breweries versus you guys me paying you guys to hang out this guy right here that's the that's the difference he's paying the money maker see, oh see, see john's it's, chester it's the experience <laughs> though you can pay an uber to take you around which is good great grand wonderful Everybody on the bus, but if you ride with us, you get an experience, and that's that's what we're promoting is the experience portion of and it. And also, I mean, it's, it goes down to expertise as well. Like where we're more like we we'll, we're going to take you to the breweries we like, and we're pretty um, like um, pretty esteemed beer nerds as far as like what's good. We we've done our research, so it's if you come with us. We're not going to take, like, uh, we have people like, we should go to Yards. And I love Yards, but you can go to Yards at any time. But you might not know about ours. You might not know about, like, Urban Village. Like, Mm -hmm. there's all these breweries in Philadelphia you might not know about that are our favorites and we have partnerships with. And it's just like, you know what, we're going to take you there. And the... We, we literally can't, like, um, like the personal experience you get with having these relationships. And I, like, you know, w- with Sean and everything like that, you know, we became friends over the years, sadly, because I know he didn't want to be my friend, but he got <laughs> well, hooked into it. You know, I'm starting, I'm starting to see why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, we have a relationship. So you're going to, so if you went by yourself, you know, you're going to go to a brewery, you're going to drink beer, but, like, you're going to find out about this brewery. And, th- and their story is really great, too. I mean, their entire story. So you get to find all that out, and you, you get to, like, the beer means more. That's yeah. that's mm-hmm. what it really comes down and to. And that's the one thing I like is when, when we go to breweries, you know, obviously, you know, you, you can go to a brewery yourself and, and hop on a brewery tour and they, you know, they take they show you their mash ton, they show you their fermenters and they say this is where our beer is made. But when we come to brewery arse and we get Sean in the back, Sean tells us and I I'll tell you, these guys have a really unique story and I don't go on a lot of um I don't accompany a lot of our tours when they take them on tours in the brew house, but when we when we come here, I always make sure I stick back because they have a really a unique niche story about number one how they got their start and number two how they got all this where they got all this equipment from. Like to me, it's like it's it's amazing. Like yeah. it's a really cool story and, and people like to hear that stuff. All right, so give us a taste of a Liberty Brew tour and Boom. tell us about how you no, got no no this don't equipment. don't don't give them because they we need them to buy tickets. Yes, so buy the <laughs> tickets. I actually <laughs> think yeah, Sean, go ahead and. Uh, Hit us with your your story. Your story still like intrigues me to this day. Like about your brewing system, how you guys got your start and your brewing system. Like, yeah, I, I mean, love I, it. I'll try to give the abridged version, but, uh, <laughs> but this is it, just a tease. Yeah, but so again, starters, home brewers, um, they hear it all the time. But again, when the Liberty Brew Tours comes, it's important for me that I, I give the story as the owner of the of the business. Um, I think, like you said, when your friends are driving around visiting breweries, um, it's different here. Whereas my brother and I are here giving the giving the telling our story. Um, but again, home brewing, home brewing, home brewing. You know, at at one point it's like, do you want to keep home brewing or do you want to do this for for real? Um, so we said, let's do this for real. So my brother quit his day job, 
and moved to uh, California, go to UC Davis. Um, that's like an intense like five month program. You get like a brewing certificate. Uh, the, upon the conclusion of that, uh, there's also uh, taps in the classroom, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, the, upon the conclusion of that, he moved back and he didn't want to leave Philly. He wanted to work for uh, he wanted to live in Philly and work for a brewery. Uh, interviewed with a bunch of breweries, ended up getting a job at Victory. Oh, cool! cool. Yeah. Um, so he commuted from downtown for two years. Wow! Changing shifts, um, but learned a tremendous amount of information in terms of the ingredients they use. Mm-hmm. All German malt, uh, all whole flower hops, and the pilsners. The pilsners. The pilsners <laughs> are amazing. Yeah. Like um, Braumeister pils, which mm-hmm. we don't see a lot around here, is. I think the best pills are out there. They're freaking Baltimore. I'm just Porter. realizing it's been too long since I've had a Victory beer. It's been actually quite yeah. a while since I've had a Victory beer. I might have had one like a week or two ago. No, I haven't. You can't go wrong with Prima. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, but worked at Victory, and then at the same time he was in California, um, I was working a... We were both kind of engineers by trade, so I was working for a chemical company in King of Prussia, and I had the opportunity to um, move to Europe. Oh, so the company nice. um, was 2008, so it was like the downturn of the economy, and my job was being phased out, and the company said they wanted to retain me and said, would you like to move to France to, to live out there for like four years? Wow. Said, oh, wow. Sure. I, wh- whatever. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, whatever. So I moved out there, and I knew we knew before that I wanted to, we wanted to start a brewery. So I, I went out there. I moved to Normandy, and I was like, where's the closest brewery? I was like, I'm in the north of France, which there's not much. No. Like, no one knows imagine. anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not in the Beer de Garde region, which is the like, closer to Belgium. I just Googled the closest brewery, and this is this guy named Patrick um, making beer for, like, the local supermarkets. And he's been, been in business for, like, 30 years. So every, every Saturday, I'd go brew beer with him. Mm. Oh, wow. Um, it was called Chanteloupe, Brasserie Chanteloupe, and that means wolf songs. So one of our <laughs> IPAs on tap is wolf songs. Oh, how it's cool. an homage to him. Oh, he made, cool. like, old-school English beer. It really was. I'd bring him, like, Orval, and he goes, ugh, that's not beer. <laughs> uh, all he wanted to do was make, like, blonde ales. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was good, good to... You know, get experience to learn how to make beer. Yeah, and I homebrew at the same time. Um, and then, as I my job was to travel all over Europe, so I could travel wherever I wanted to go. So what I would do is I was for my day job, I would pick a country I wanted to go to, and then I would visit breweries. What uh, a life! Yeah, it was, it was a <laughs> tough life. But I was fortunate enough to sit down with over like a hundred brewers, and um, you know, ask them how do they how do they make their own beer. You know, how, how does the Germans make their lagers? You know, how do, how do UK make, how do the English make their cask beers? You know, how do the Belgians make their lambics? I was able to kind of sit down and just pick their brains and just drink beers. Um, so did that for four years and just like uh, ended up befriended a bunch of breweries uh, like Alvin mm. over in Belgium, uh, worked a couple beer festivals and then um, did a collaboration with Tagaverhop. They make oh, a beer cool. called Extra. It's amazing. But did a collaboration with them. Um, I really fell in love with Belgian beer making because they, I feel like they're it's kind of a freewheeling approach to making beer. Like mm-hmm. put whatever you want in there. Um, they have kind of like a less is more approach and like the less that touches it, the, the less mechanization and things right. like that. Um, Plus they have uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. That too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then came back here and uh, said, uh, "Let's start a business in Philadelphia." And uh, how, how the hell do you do that? Um, you know, there's a it's not really interesting, but there's a company called Score. In Philadelphia, which is a bunch of retired, basically, CEOs that help you write business oh. plans. Huh. Um, so they would pair you, whatever your business is, with a, with a CEO that's kind of close. Our CEO just like drinking beer. <laughs> but he knew how to write a business plan. He knew how to raise money. So we wrote a business plan, and then uh, we did this. We would invite everyone that I knew over to my row home. We bought a, a, in South Philly and did the same story for two years to raise wow. the amount of money we needed. Wow. I didn't want to go to a bank. Yeah. Um, and it took two years to raise the money, and then it took another two years to find this place. Wow! Because um, there's a lot of empty places in Philly, but it's where 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 can you afford? You know? Yeah. So if I'm doing the math right on this, so two years to find the place, two years of fundraising. That's four. Four years in France. Yeah. So this we, has been an idea for upwards of a decade. Yeah, we we did our homework. Wow. Yeah. You don't get much of that in the industry anymore. It's like, hey, let's do it. Here's a spot. Here's equipment. For us, done. I mean, we we knew that we wanted to do it right. And not slip out the gate. Wow! And then you know That's we couldn't. Well, there's so many breweries. There's so many awesome yeah. breweries out there, and like yeah. you know, all these people are coming here. They might never come back. Yeah, you know, so they they usually don't. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it, it explains um, why you're able to. You guys are able to create such a diverse list of beers and do them all so well. And I think you have such a smart space here. 
like the the tasting room where there is air conditioning and it's very comfortable over there is super cute super hip like a fun place to hang out you have outdoor space the the brewing area you know it just it doesn't feel like you're a new brewery here like you can tell there was thought and time put into this and as people that have experience the gamut of breweries i think as super new super young and probably shouldn't have done this all the way to you know well established and will be around forever it's it's refreshing to see a new brewery that has their shit together and i think brewery yeah. arts we have our shit together no and it's it's like a hipster spot not filled with douchiness <laughs> no i no, totally agree yeah, a bunch yeah. of babies yeah. in here no i totally yeah. agree i know and, and like to go back to what you're saying i mean it's like uh, malcolm gladwell like 10,000 hours type of thing. I mean, mm-hmm. 10 years, you know, the quality of the beer stands for itself. I mean, it's really solid coming right out the gates. And how often, you know, do you get that from breweries where, like, every beer on tap, you're like, damn, this is really good. Damn, mm-hmm. this is really yeah, good. Yeah, sometimes you're like, mm, is this luck? But you keep coming back and the beer is still, still good. good. Maybe speaking, next time. Speaking of good beer. Yes. What did, what did you uh, go get us? Uh, so I got the Starving Artist Saison. Nice. Ooh. Appropriate. Maybe and I will say, I when I bring tours into this brewery, I have a zillion um, growlers from this brewery because every time I come down here, I forget to bring mine, so I buy another one because nice. every time we nice. bring a tour in, I always want to buy beer, so I buy more and more and more. And I have a whole like shelf full of just brewery arse growlers, and <laughs> it's like a, a growing collection. <laughs> a collection. And they're all exactly yeah. the same, though. Yeah, like, it's, it's not like collectible. I, I, like, I get the 32s. <laughs> I get the 32 Is ounces, it? and I have like... A stack of them on a shelf. <laughs> I feel like that's not as much a testament to ARS, but more to your stupidity of not remembering. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Yeah, just take yeah, the damn yeah, growler. Yeah, with just bring you. a growler. But I don't, I don't. I don't have that that's many from anywhere of, else because I like. Don't the you guys whole have a point. growler Every, machine? No, you need to don't. get one just for him. I know. Yeah. So this beer is quite delicious and amazing. This is a uh, saison. Yes. So it's um, we we use the uh, Dupont strain here. Um, and then we brew it together. We ferment it together with Britannomyces C, which is a very like pineapple fruity mm-hmm. um, Brett strain. Um, and then we had laurel hops, which is like lemon lime, and then Tet Tet, which is more grassy and herbal. Um, it's very dry, very refreshing. It's beer. really nice. I mean, I love saisons, and this is definitely right up my alley. Yeah, the kind this of saisons is a I like. very Wayne beer. It is a very Wayne. This beer. should be called. Nice. Beer Buster's Wayne's beer. <laughs> the other Wayne's beer. The, the other, other Wayne's <laughs> And do you guys know the difference between the Saison and the Beer de Garde? The difference between the Saison? Well, I mean, the history behind those beers. The specific history? Yes. No. So um, the Saison was for the field hands. They would right. Oh, get, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the Beer de Garde was for the house, the people that own the, okay, right. the, the farm and stuff like that. So, again, so Saison's are technically like peasant beers, if oh, you will. Oh, it's like the okay. working man's It's technically, the working man's Technically, beer. lobster was for the working man, too. Right. That's what they gave the the, prison, the yeah, prisoners. It's, it's the cockroach Nobody of the ocean. Yeah. yeah, I knew that like, the whole farmhouse Saison thing was sort of like that. So you I didn't did, know that we, so, but, no, so you did, and you lied to me. I know, but I didn't know that. He, like, does, he does that. No, wow. he was setting you wow. up to sound smart. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. No, the class separation. like the sort of. Do you know what beer to guard means, John? Uh, beer of, of the guard, the, the guard, guard. <laughs> beer on guard. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not a Frenchman, uh, right? I'm an American. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, what does it mean? Yeah. Yeah, beer for it? keeping. Nah, does it really? So yeah. beer to guard. Oh, because a guard like keeps the. Okay, they yeah. lager the beer to guards. Right. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. And now I feel dumber than I did before. Well, yeah, let's talk about go. something you, you know, know about. Beer he definitely doesn't, doesn't know about beer to guards. That's true. Uh, and they are the perfect beer for Thanksgiving, just saying. They pair well with every course of your Thanksgiving dinner. Excellent. Now you know. So uh, you guys do both public and private tours, yes. correct? Yes. Uh, so, I mean, our public tours, I mean, we're, we have dates open up on our website and everything like that. And they're they're... It's not like uh, if you go on a public tour versus a private tour, it's going to be like, oh, my God, you're going to get so much difference. But the private tour just uh, like excludes like other people getting on the tour. So it's just your group going on the tour. So we just close it out to your group and everything like that. Um, and both tours, I mean, we do pick the breweries. Um, and, you know, people are like, oh, can we pick the breweries? And it's like, listen... Um, I don't know you, but I probably know more than you. <laughs> 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 sometimes sometimes Ash- we let them pick stuff if, if they No, you, what you like say is, know do you know about. the difference between a Saison and a beer to go? <laughs> <laughs> if they say no, then you say no, you can't pick the breweries. No, and that is actually becoming an issue because, I mean, like, we, we're getting more beer nerds, and it's just like, you know, it's, uh, certain breweries are expecting certain things with certain, like, New England style IPAs, and, like, not all breweries are going to have that stuff, and it's just like, you know, you're, you're doing a tour of different breweries and stuff like that, and the ones we pick, it's not like, we, we're never picking a place because it's just like, 
oh yeah, like you're just going here because mm. like you know we we've we've thought about this. We always our our basic position on like what we do is based on like what we like like wh- and well, I think we have a good barometer of like as far as the people involved of like you know what other people will like and you know we haven't had any real complaints but like if we did I just delete them so it doesn't matter like yeah. <laughs> Good strategy. Well, it is an interesting question because, and maybe, I don't know, but if your guest or main guest is someone that feels very strongly for or against certain beer styles, um, you know, there, you know, there are certain breweries that are known for certain beer styles more than others. I mean, wouldn't you consider the customer in that way? Steph, would you? Like, I want to go to where the loggers are. Don't take me to the breweries that are making only hazy IPAs. Would you tell an artist how to paint a picture? I feel like she already has. She totally yeah, yeah, would. She no, totally no, you're would. absolutely right. No, I would. No, no. I mean, if I don't want a naked woman well, on my wall, I don't want you to paint a naked woman. No, no, but uh, the, no, you're absolutely right. No, we accommodate for, like, if people really want to go to certain breweries, we, we try to make it happen and everything. Well, and like I don't that. even feel and like, style. I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel That's, like a but, little survey, like, what kind of beers do you like? What kind of beers do you uh, not but like? Then, and but like, then you're getting into a situation where now we're appeasing every individual person, which I know in, like, theory that makes sense, but that doesn't. That's not the world. So, like, it just no. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I get too many it. people yeah. that have been like, "Oh, take us to where they make the best uh, hazy IPAs or the best loggers." Well, um, we're lucky though because the breweries in Philadelphia typically m- make a range of beer styles, and, and, and that's, typically that's there's what, something that's for everyone. It's not like that plays in our favor. And we we had a group one time where they were like, uh, the the lady was like, "My husband really likes sours." So one of our stops was Naked Brewing, and of course we all know Naked Brewing. We yeah. all know how crazy they are and crazy Naked Brian is. I bought them a bottle of stupid Naked Flanders and gave it to them at the end as sort of a parting gift, and they were they were beside themselves because we had not really encountered any sour beers throughout the day that day. But yeah. that stupid Naked Flanders really made their day, and it's a really good sour beer. It's a great beer. Yeah. So if someone tells us like. Hey, uh, we like this certain style of beer. We like that certain style of beer. When and, and, and the great thing about the breweries in Philly is that everyone has, um, you know, that that wide variety of styles. There's not anyone that I feel like that does, you know, they only stick to certain styles. If you know, we're going to three breweries. Chances are, if someone wants a certain beer, we're going to run into it at some point or another. And if I see it and I know that they've said that to me, then I'm going to make sure they get it. They get it in their glass before before the end of the day that day. So, so you guys hosted an interesting group of people from a pretty well known brewery, correct? Sierra Nevada, yeah. Oh, uh, cool. Was the, Ken uh, Grossman there? Ken Grossman, probably yeah. not. I, I wasn't there, but honest, I would say he probably wasn't there. Uh, Ken Grossman was probably like in the Caribbean, chilling year? on the beach. Two was that last year we were in Asheville? A year ago, uh, Rich and I went to Asheville for. You took me there for my birthday, essentially. And we did, the like, the top-tier Sierra Nevada tour that you can do. What do they call it? Like, the Brewmasters tour or whatever. You're there for, like, three and a half hours, and you get to literally taste every beer. And at the beginning of the tour, I saw Ken, Ken Grossman walked right by our group. And I was like, I said to the, the, our tour guide, because there's only, like, eight people on the tour. It's a super exclusive tour. I'm like, that was Ken Grossman. He's like, yeah, he actually does stop by. Like, his son usually runs his facility, but he stops by now and then. I'm like, do you think he'll talk to us? He's like, I don't know. He's a really shy guy. He doesn't usually talk to the groups of people. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, whatever. I was like, I just want my selfie with Ken Grossman, because that would be really freaking cool. Well, at the very end of the tour, um, they take you to the, the barrel room with all, like, the exclusive bottles, and they'll pull one special bottle off the shelf, and the whole tour will share that bottle at the end. Well, Ken was in the pub at that time, and he actually came in and shared the bottle with us. And I was like, it's my birthday. Can I take a picture with you? And he's like, sure. He was super cool. He talked. He didn't stay long. You know, he talked for a little bit. But I was like, holy shit, I shared a beer with Ken Grossman. I'm definitely jealous of that. That was really cool. (laughs) I mean, I met he was here for beer camp when beer camp was in Philly. It feels like ages ago. So, you know, of course, I got a picture with him then. And that was super cool. But this was a little more intimate and special. So when I saw that you guys had a crew from Sierra Nevada, I was like, I wonder if Ken Grossman was in there. Yeah. And it was one of those things, too. I want to be like. Like I, I, I also uh, I like I, I don't know what he looks like, so I wouldn't be like yeah. And okay, that's two strikes against you. Now. No, yes, there's <laughs> going to be a third one, I assure you. But and now the uh, the other thing was uh, I was pretty. I don't want to say drunk because that's mm, like you're probably uh, drunk. I can yeah, show so, you pictures. He yeah. probably no, I, I kept was making, pretty drunk. I kept making the the event we had with them. It was awesome. We just provided the transportation. They set everything else up, and it was it was just all the reps from Sierra Nevada. It was an amazing time. Uh, we went to like Bottle Bar East. We went to Monks. Um, 
uh, can't remember where else we went because literally by the it's a good story. Every, yes, no, no, <laughs> Urban Village, Urban Village. The no, best. the the uh, best part was uh, when we were we were uh, on the tour. I kept doing Facebook Live things, and I kept calling it Bandcamp because I was so oh, drunk. No. So I was like, "We're here, Sierra Nevada Bandcamp," and it was like everyone's like, "Dude, it's not Bandcamp," and I'm like, "I was I was sitting at home with my uh, my newborn son, and I was I was monitoring the posts from my phone, and I was like." What the fuck <laughs> is band camp across America? Yeah, so it wasn't my proudest moment, but it was pretty... <laughs> it stopped. And I stopped. texted him, I was like, dude, change that shit. What, are, are you at band camp or are you at beer camp? <laughs> it was a good time. It was a really good time. Yeah, so, yeah, good time. What I like about, uh, about the tours that you do, at least uh, that's on your website, I want to ask you about this. So you, you make a point that if you go to a brewery and they have like a, like a special you know, mug club beer or something in the back that's exclusive that you guys... More often than not, get that for the group. How do you broker that deal? So um, we do it by, if you're familiar with Broken Goblets, Mm -hmm. um, Irregulars Club. So as a business, we are a member of the Irregulars Club. Now, if we talk very sweetly to Mike, and he's there, and we love you, Mike, we can get them to get us a... Like what we do is we do pitchers and taster glasses, and they and they're really cool. They set us up in their in their brewery in their in their current location. They set us up in their in the back in their brew house. They give us tables. They give us uh, three four pitchers of beer and taster glasses and like a uh, a rinse pitcher with water. So everyone everyone's free to taste as little or as much as they want. So if we walk in there and we know the right people, we can say, hey. You know what? You have the regular the regulars beer on in the back. Can we get a picture of that for our crew? Now, our crew wouldn't be able to get that if they came in on their own, but we try to get that for them when they come in. If um, we go to Naked and Naked's got uh, stupid Naked Flanders, or they've got pineapple um, Aloha on you know you know on bombers, and they've got them cold in the uh, cold box, you know we'll get a bottle of that for them and we'll bring that out in addition to the beers we already provide on the tour and then uh, like if they have stuff like that's still fermenting and stuff like that i mean we've had brewers just kind of pour yeah. and they're like you know it's not right carbonated of, yet right but, out of the bright mm-hmm. tanks right yeah. out of the fermenters, I mean, and they're like here have a sample of this you can't beat that you yeah, know you're, you're cool. getting it right before and you're trying something new i mean you know it's not the end the final end product but you know you're again as beer dorks like I love that stuff. So, like, anytime we do get it for the group, it's just like, you know, I'm excited it for is super them. Cool. Yeah, and, like, we put in the time and effort to start a whole fucking podcast to get to the point where <laughs> yeah. we get to do stuff like yeah. that at breweries. Yeah. And it, it's super awesome, though. It is really cool to be able to taste, like, green beers out of the fermenter and taste so stuff that's So you want to know what it's like to be a beer buster? Go on yeah. a Liberty, Liberty <laughs> Brew Star. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to provide your own you microphones. <laughs> But it's really cool. It's cool to be able to, to, to cross that line, be able to, like, get the stuff that you wouldn't Speaking of beers get. and yeah. fermenters, what is good grape? <laughs> good, oh, grape. Yeah. good grape is our next can release, which is on June thirteenth. Um, that is a an IPA uh, with uh, all Vic Secret hops, which I believe are an, an Australian hop. I think so. Um, yes, we looked that up I at Boniface. So. Yes, we did. Um, Wait, same Boniface. Yes, nice. or boner face. But, 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 boner. but it's boner uh, got a lot of grape characteristics. Um, so we is add it better or worse than grape ape. Grape <laughs> ape sucks. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? Grape ape was you can terrible. all go suck it. You can sip Wait, on some what was, scissor what was some other ape? time. Grape yeah. ape was. You, one did of you the like Diamond Tap as a kid? No one did. I, I kind of liked it. See, that I explains a lot it. right there. It's literally like adult Diamond Tap. So it's Rogue and Voodoo Donuts. Voodoo Donuts has oh, okay, a donut. Yes. And Grape right, ape yeah. is my yeah, favorite gotcha. Voodoo Donut. Oh, okay, gotcha. It would, it would be. I know. Well, so the fuck what? You probably like the one with the big strip of bacon on top. Yeah, no shit. Steph, why are you the worst? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Because I'm, I'm showing the least amount of chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair so how enough. often do you guys do can releases? Once a month. Once a month. 50 awesome. cases a month. So 16 ounce. Yep. Four packs. Yep. Very yeah. cool. Do you get yeah. a line down past young? No, past no, young? No, past no, young? Past young? Like no. no. Very cool. More relaxed here. So if you That's release cool. a, a beer, usually how many days after that can you get it? Uh, about a week. A week. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Except for Philly Special. That one goes well, fast for yeah. obvious reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in right now? No. No, you no. missed it. Damn it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you live right around the corner. I know, I know. We're going to release it uh, during the first week of the NFL football. <laughs> I'll be back for that. Now, you do distribute. Do you distribute do. just draft or draft end cans? And just draft. how far do you distribute? Um, Philadelphia County. So all the counties that make up Philly. Very cool. That, Philly. Would, be, that would be one. <laughs> no, there's not. No, there's like five counties. There's two, and then there's three in the suburbs, right? 
Am I right? I have correct no, me, guys. I have no idea. Sorry, you said person. all the counties that make up Philadelphia. What's well, Philadelphia County, right? One. Philadelphia yeah. County. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Surrounding all Philadelphia, surrounding, Bucks, yeah. Montgomery, yeah. Chester, yeah. Delaware. I don't know. We go through Penn, so Dirty they have Jersey. Like, uh, five counties. So. <laughs> Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Geography over yeah, here yeah. is mapping out everything. I'm not from Philly. So. Yeah. You're right. I got something for you. Yeah, I don't even know where Iceland is. So uh, That's yeah. true. Um, and to uh, like piggyback off that, um, so uh, we, uh, I wanted to uh, make a beer for my wedding. I have a wedding. I'm engaged. Uh, I have a wedding uh, in September coming up. And well, uh, congratulations. congratulations! No, no, don't. No, no, don't. No. Um, but no, I. Uh, I'm so sorry. No one cares, to hear that. John. I wanted. I wanted to get a beer brewed <laughs> for my wedding, uh, and it's I went to much. like I wanted to have like the top brewery in Philadelphia brew it. So after they said no, and a bunch of other ones said no, I uh, went to ARS, and they agreed. Or to arse. brew or arse to brew my beer. So what we're is it called? Despair no, ale. No. So that's that's the thing. Uh, I want I want to kind of have a name contest for what the beer. We have an entry. We're, so yep, do it. Because Brittany bitch. Oh, oh nice. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. Um, but my idea was prima nocta uh, for for the beer name from Braveheart when the king has sex with the virgin on his wedding day. I thought that was wow. That's. Yeah. Deep. That's into, really deep. deep. No yeah, I wasn't going to gonna use the word deep. <laughs> but way to put it. But uh, you know, balls I, deep. Even. I, I think we're going to have like a little contest to uh, name the uh, the wedding beer that we're going to collab on. So. That's cool. Well, we are the we're the first to enter a name. I, Brittany's yeah. bitch. I like Britney bit. Britney's bitch. Yeah. It, it that, <laughs> that, that was it. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> We've been delivered a, another beer. What uh, what beer do we have here, Sean? This one is uh, Simpleton, so it's a beer to meal, which just wait. Means say that again. It's a beer to meal, so beer it should be honey beer. I think I got oh. this. One. Oh, okay. Damn it's it. a beer that is a meal. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we it's don't, a, no, don't not have to meal m e a l meal m i e l. I can't spell. Um, I'm illiterate. It's so. French. Certainly. <laughs> it's French. You wouldn't understand. It's oh, a, just oh, a honey oh. saison. So I assume you use local honey. We do uh, from Fruitwood Orchards. Oh, uh, where are Orange they blossom honey. Mm, I'm not sure. Fruitwood, Pennsylvania. I don't source the ingredients, but Fruitwood, I think they're from Pennsylvania. either Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Um, local. Yeah. Very cool. Um, we always try to use uh, local ingredients, so obviously besides the hops, but um, like spices and things like that and fruit. So. Um, yeah, again, we use the same DuPont yeast strain, uh, Brett C. blend. So it's a similar base to yeah. the previous season yep. Yep. with the honey. It's really nice. Um, I love the finish, yeah. that yeah. it's not sweet at all. No, I do not like sweet beers. Yeah. Yeah. I like to be refreshed. Yeah, yeah. It's for definitely sure. very like, refreshing and crisp. Even our dark beers, too. Yeah. The porter's not sweet. I was kind of, when you said, before you said it was just the, the Saison with honey, I was, I was thinking, is this going to taste like a mead? But not at no. all. We throw the honey in the Whirlpool, mm-hmm. um, so the yeast ferments most of the honey out and leaves the aroma. Right. Yeah. So you have yeah. what? A like ten that. barrel brew house. We have a ten barrel. So yep. how much honey would you put in a batch of this? Uh, I wish my brother was here. Mm-hmm. Hey, a you big know bucket. A big bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Big old bucket. That's usually the norm. You told half your story about how your brother got started, but oh yeah, other, you never said. Yeah, about I was the other, the other half about. of the story, which also really, I th- I feel like is the more intriguing part, is where did you get all this great stainless steel equipment? So we uh, raised the amount of money that we thought we needed to raise. Which wasn't enough. Which is never <laughs> enough. <laughs> Walk into any other brewery, and they yep. raised a lot more money than us. <laughs> um, so we, so this system, uh, if it was made in the U.S. or Canada, is about a quarter million dollars. Wow. Um, this system's a lot less. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, quick story: how I was visiting uh, my wife's grandmother in Sarasota, Florida, and there was a, a brewery called Big Top. We drove by. I was like, I'm going in there because that's what, that's what I do. Like, everyone, yeah, we a brewery. You, yeah. you go to a town, where's the closest brewery? They weren't open yet. So I walk in, not open. The owner's sitting at the bar. Um, I said, can I try some beer? He's like, there's no beer on tap yet. I was like, Have you, has it been brewed? He said, yeah. I was like, well, where'd you buy the system? Um, he said, China. I said, does it make beer? He said, yes. So I said, can I have a business card? So he grabbed the business card from the, the big top owner. And mind you, did not try any beer. Got the business card, and I contacted the individual in China, Bella Wang. Um, sent her an email, and I said, how many brewing, brewing systems have you sold in the United States? She said, two. I said, I know where one is. Where's the other one? <laughs> um, it happened to be Paradox Brewery in the Adirondacks, and we're from upstate New York, so my parents live, live about 45 minutes away from this brewery. Oh, shit. So at the time, my brother was at Victory. He reached out to the Paradox Brewery, and um, he said, can I come up there and brew on your system, see if you guys make beer. You can make good beer. Mm-hmm. So I went up there for a weekend uh, with my dad, 
brewed on the system. He said it's good enough. You know, there's there's some quirks they said to it, but it it, it works. It does the job. So after that, we um, worked with them for about a year to year and a half. With uh, there's a brewery consultant in the area, Scott Morrison, the dude. You guys have ever heard of him? Um, he helped us nego- not negotiate, but just kind of help build out the system. So after a year and a half, we were ready to push go, and I had to send half the amount of money wire transfer over to China. Uh. Um, I was on vacation in Asheville at the time, and uh, I was just—I just remember I was just sitting in my hotel room, like we'll be like, "What am I doing? Like I've never myself. I've only homebrewed. Like my brother worked at Victory, but I was like, "What are we? What are we doing? Like, yeah. where is this money going?" Um, and then I had to wait about three or four months because everything was made to order. And they sent me two pictures via email. They said, it's done. Send us the rest over. <laughs> what? So I was like, all right. <laughs> Boom. Wire, tra- wire transfer over. Um, and then you had to wait, you know, for the, the tanks to come over across the water. Yeah. Because they're not, they're not flown over. Yeah. So that took like, I don't know, a month and a half. A long ass time, yeah. Did uh, you have that knot up? in your stomach yeah. the Pretty entire much. time? Yeah. And Did it just show up in a big box? It showed up in a Mack truck. Oh, my God. And the weirdest yeah. thing was, like, I don't have a lot of, like, international experience, like, especially Asian, dealing with the Chinese. Like, if the, uh, how do you get that over here? Yeah. You have to work with a shipping company that does that for yeah. a living. Yeah. Um, so I would, I had a day job at the time where I traveled to Mid-Atlantic. So I would, I drove to, um, actually, the same company, the Paradox used, the shipping company. I went and negotiated with them. So that once the, once the equipment got to the shore in China, then they took it over. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was in American hands. It sounds bad, but I knew it was in their hands, and then it would come over here safely. Right. Um, so it came over here, uh, pulled up in a Mack truck, and it opened up, and uh, everything was there. Bella Wang uh, never existed again. Um, <laughs> so we had no assistance how to build, build the system. Um, nothing, there were no instructions that this came. Everything came, just parts. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you said you're an engineer by trade. Not a brewing engineer, well, yeah. <laughs> polymer scientist. Um, yeah. That's a little different. But that's why we hired a brewery consultant to put everything together because just everything was just wow. kind of just thrown. So, like, literally, the person place. you bought it from just like vaporized. Like, yeah, I mean, the company on. still exists. We we use them for when we buy replacement parts. But um, right. I would say, from a customer st- customer support standpoint, that there was like because like barring the fact that you had spoken to two people who had purchased brewing equipment from the same place. That really sounds like a scam. Yeah, like, more or like less. It yeah. Sounds Bella like I'm a, Wang probably got fired yeah. for some of the Nigerian reason. prince. Oh, no, she definitely killed herself. <laughs> I, wow. Okay. She's in China, <laughs> or in the brew house, or in the brew house. Never found the pieces. But you know, uh, <laughs> it works. It makes beer, and we were able to stay afloat the first year. You know, I mean, everything's yeah. broke on this thing, but um, yeah. I probably wouldn't. So was that was that just the brew house? Was that everything? All these wow. fermenters as well? Everything. Oh wow, wow. Yep. So I like. Huh. So you can understand when we bring when we bring our tours in here. I mean, obviously, if you're looking at it from the brew the brewery or the the, the tap room yeah. side, and you're not here to talk to Sean or Andy, you're like, oh, cool. And you know, another brewery, we're going to try their beers. But when we bring our groups over, and Sean's here, and he tells them this, you get to hear that what story. I, what yeah. I what I consider this amazing very uh intriguing story mm-hmm. it's like really cool like and I, to this day i'll still come back here because i want to hear it like i love to hear them tell Gather it around the campfire yes. tell us the yeah, story yeah, yeah. Tell us <laughs> dumb we of, you know of <laughs> hey, it the, the junk you know the the, the amazing system we bought yeah. from another country like and we had no idea what we were getting into <laughs> it's like and we were able to be successful with it yeah and that's yeah. that's the success well successful is a yeah. Blues term right yeah. now. You know? now yeah. Still uh, open. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah, hey, so all the best stuff's made here. in Japan. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, this was China, so they're different. Uh, Those are different uh, countries, my guy. They're different countries. Yeah. No, the, the other thing, too, is uh, Whoops. Like, we can always gauge a tour, too, because, like I, again, I think they have a really interesting story. So Because it's very personable. Uh, and when a tour is not interested, I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be a long day. Because mm-hmm. that just means they're like trying to get fucked up. Yeah. And, yeah. like, it just, like, uh, you know... We don't get many of them, which is where we're lucky with. Mm-hmm. And I mean, literally, I think we had one bad, bad just tour. One. They were just like douchey. Like yeah. they were just mm-hmm. like they didn't give a shit. They were throwing like the pebbles at each other. And I'm like, dude, you're like, it wasn't like there were like 21 year olds. I'm like, you're in your 30s. Yeah. I'm like, when, I like to have fun. Like I like, <laughs> yeah. I'm literally my shirt is open as I talk about this. Ladies, I'm like, it is true. When yeah. Steph asked earlier about you know you guys have your your third, they have their half. So when we break it up into what we do, um, we play to our strengths as well. 
John's brother is uh, pretty damn good at doing computer shit, which neither of us know a goddamn thing about, um, except for www.wedonknowshit.com. <laughs> and um, so when we do tours, don't, I'm typically... Don't. Don't do it. Dan's going there right now. <laughs> if it's not taken, I'll buy it. Um, when we do tours, it's a porn site, I'm typically... It? We don't know shit.com is a totally awesome idea still being worked on. <laughs> Check back later. I, if, if we're running a tour together, when we were on tours in Philly, we try to do it with um, two of us because parking in Philly is, number one, a big pile of steaming dog shit. It's the worst thing you can imagine. So... I'll drive. I love to drive. I love to, I love to have that aspect of it. John is more of the um, the entertainer. He's he's our version of, I guess, what you could say, Dan. He's our fucking guy that likes to show people all the time. He plays, he plays uh, tunes. He does beer trivia. What kind of tunes do you play? Oh, so I'm a big fan Musical of musical uh, ones. Yeah, so I like to keep it as Philly as possible. So I really like to go for a lot of Hall and Oates. Um, nice. I like to keep it. I mean. Big hits on tours have been Wannabe um, by Spice Girls, um, uh, R. Kelly, Ignition, even though I don't... I Wait, we're trying to encourage people to take your tour. <laughs> oh, no, they, <laughs> they want, they're going to want to. Just because you don't want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. All right? Got to get with my friends. Thank you. Uh, and it's just, you know, I, I try to keep it as lively as possible because, uh, like I said earlier, like, I mean... Because I, I heard you on another podcast, like, of uh, what is your guilty pleasure tunes and... Oh, I, I literally have probably none. naked. Mm bop yeah, by yeah. Hanson for sure. No, is mine. Bop, we've done Disney. Bop, bop, do like a, the last tour I did, uh, the, the guy was singing Mulan, so I threw on. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, I threw on a uh, uh, "Make a Man Out of You." So wow. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I, no, I used to work at Disney, so. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Do you play the Roots ever? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many people are typically do you want on more? A, on a tour? Uh, we so, get we can get up to. Like thirteen, four. We we were in fifteen passenger vans oh, okay. um, on a typical Nobody. tour, so <laughs> we could yeah just, zero. We need just John and Mike customers. every weekend. It's all in our mind. Getting drunk we can here. run. We can generally run up to if we're doing um, a one van tour. We can get up to if it's you know it, it's all variable. If it's one of us driving, we can get up to fourteen. Um, typically, when we're running in Philly, we like to have two of us because I can like. Obviously, here the parking is absolute garbage. Oh, totally. So I can pull my van hey, up. We got a space right out front. Don't yeah. discourage people I mean, from coming here. Try, try and, and park a, a limousine night. in that same space, and you'll well, feel my normal pain. people coming here are not going to um, try. To I park actually a drive in a limousine a lot, like not a van, a limousine <laughs> is <laughs> VIP. It's a stretch Escalade, no, isn't it? So what yes. I'll do is I'll pull up. <laughs> the I door. assumed you were driving the limousine <laughs> <laughs> with those chrome spinning rims. Yeah, we're going to get we're going to get spinners on our van next. That's we're going to get spinning every time I stop. You know. I pull up to it. I pull up to the door of the brewery or whatever, and it, it, it makes it just makes the day quicker. John jumps out. Juan jumps out. Whoever's riding shotgun lets the people out. They go in. They get started. If I, it takes me 15, 20, sometimes it takes me 20, 30 minutes to drive around and find a goddamn parking spot. That's on me. Liberty Brew Tours. We take the stress out of parking. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it's literally yeah. Yeah. that's another that's fact. We're not yeah. worried yeah. about the. Parking no. authority. And the cost, too. Yeah. Like, uh, here, at least you can get a free spot. Yeah. But, like, to be fair, this crap. this area actually isn't that bad. I, like, I lived place. all over Philadelphia. I lived in Fairmount. I lived, no, I didn't actually live in Fairmount. I was going to say Fairmount is the worst he that I there, know he about. He lived there one night. Uh, Rittenhouse Square is pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, Rittenhouse Square. I mean, I mean, like, outside. Like, yeah, uh, none of us are living in Rittenhouse, let's be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, <laughs> no. you know, so it's That's like, why I don't live in Philly, because if I lived in Philly, that's where I would want to live. Of course. Yeah. That makes so much <laughs> sten- uh, sense. Don't you have to be clear? <laughs> or vegan. <laughs> or vegan. Vegan, yeah. that helps. That does really help, yeah. Steph, I like the, the death eyes you get, it gave me earlier. It makes me like hesitant to make jokes anymore. <laughs> I'm, like, you learn quickly. I'm so Are you familiar Padawan. with the, uh, the Philly Seed Fest? Of course. I've been there every year. It's been there. Yeah, oh, we, no, we were did you there miss this it. Year? We missed it last year. Holy That's shit. Right. We were there. We were there. We had our tent set up. Uh, and it was a very like interesting I knew not day, to, to say the least. That makes sense. Um don't start dissing vegans. I'm not dissing anyone. I already have one reason to punch John. Hashtag not Jonathan. I Listen, don't need another one. I like leather. I like um, meat. Well, I like well, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like beer. I had yeah. so I had a question for you, Sean, about your yes, please, your, ask Sean your a Chinese equipment <laughs> that just happened to show up in a truck that you weren't sure if it would actually get here. How nervous were you the first brew? 
I guess was that more so your brother than you? Is it going to fall apart? I mean, no I, I helped out. I figured, I mean, yeah, yeah uh, pretty nervous. Yeah, okay. did it, we really did it nothing fall apart? worked. No, everything worked. Are we accidentally going to die right now? Um, but yeah, I mean, we weren't sure if anything. A lot of the stuff still doesn't work to this day. Some of the pumps, <laughs> things <laughs> like that, that we haven't, we didn't replace. Wow. Um, but yeah, yeah, we, yeah, it was pretty much a leap of faith. You know, you got to take chances sometimes. And yeah. Started this business, we had to. How excited were you when you found out that it worked and it made beer? Very excited. All right, good. Yeah. good. Yeah. We knew we could replicate You're like, it. holy shit, this is actually going like, to happen. Sampling that first batch, looking at each other like, actually, you taste it first. We dumped, you taste it we first. dumped the first oh. batch. Oh, oh. Did you? oh. oh. Yeah. Because of the particular yeast we used. What, uh, was, what was the beer? Worlds Apart. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. That's a really is that good like beer. like an homage to China? And we, I'll, pull, uh, <laughs> I'll pull Worlds Apart off the tanks for you guys in, in a bit, but um, we were using a particular yeast strain that gave off the acetal and... It mm. didn't scrub off, so you got to dump it. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, I have a rule that if I go to a brewery and I pay for infected beer, I will not go back to that brewery. I won't. I won't ever badmouth a brewery on air. Um, That's my rule. No, no, I come what, very close, but not actually. <laughs> True. And, and so with like ARS to uh, the, the, the or arse. arse. God damn it, Jesus. ARS. Hey, at the very least, everybody will know how to spell it. That's true, <laughs> and and also like to be to be fair, like I, I feel like I'm a brand manager for this place because I, I was at uh, Wissahickon Brewery last night, and the girl was like, "Don't you work for Ars?" And I'm like, nice. "No." I'm like, "No." And she like, cleaned their toilets and, once, yeah. <laughs> and I was that is actually he a did. true story. But no, I was like, "No," and she's like, "Oh, you told me to go there," and I'm like, "How oh, did I?" <laughs> uh, uh, so no, so. Uh, it, it, with beer nerds, there's always something that, like, you're like, oh, why don't you like that brewery? And it's something like, arbitrary. It's never like, oh, well, they don't change their taps enough. Like, they always have the same stuff on tap, which I get to an extent. But, like, you know, if you're trying to, like, uh, like craft that, like, you know, certain beer and you're working on it. Like, when I come here, literally today, like, there's, like, four new beers on tap that I never had. And they're all excellent and stuff like that. And that's very exciting, too. And they, they do a really good job of, like, rotating beers, which is just, like... All right, when you come in here, if you come in here like you haven't been there in a month, you're going to get a completely different tap list, which is always, like, awesome to, for, for a brewery as well. And, like, at first I was not on board with that thinking of being like, oh, but you, you go back and up. Because you, you want that local brewery spot, mm-hmm. right? But, like, this place is a local brewery, and they're always changing. They're always changing. So it's it really adds another layer of, like, man, this is a really awesome brewery, you know? There is nothing wrong with consistency, though, too. I mean, um, I am kind of sad that the whole core brand idea is going away, and I completely understand and accept why. However, um, a brewery offering core brands is also a way for the brewer to impress with their ability to be consistent. And I think a lot of new young breweries, and I'm certainly not talking about brewery arse, don't get me wrong, but um, and I know a few in particular that will try to brew the same beers over and over again, and they're not consistent, so they will just name them different things. And it kind of gets them away from having to be consistent, um, and, you know, I just, I mean, I'm going to judge you on your lager. I'm going to judge you on the beer that is the hardest to make and the beer that's supposed to be clean and you can't hide behind. And, um, you know, I think if you can master that, then brew whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Put as many adjuncts or, you know, change your, your tap lines, whatever, you know. But um, I do think there is something to be said about brewers that can consistently brew clean well-made two style core beers and and, and like, that art is going away well, and also like you know i made fun of you for like the pilsner and I, I like and i i that was more of a jest because i do enjoy pilsners it's just uh when i was in, i was in germany for like two weeks and Ooh, it was just like weeks. if <laughs> he was boom, in france for boom, four boom, years boom. take that <laughs> i'm just gonna go now. <laughs> no no but it was Bye. like if i get another pilsner and lager i'm gonna like shoot myself in the face see i came back from germany and i couldn't drink craft beer here. I literally I went through a beer cleanse. I went to Victory because that was the only right. place yeah. that I could get real German beers. No, but I, I, hear, couldn't I hear brewers on this, I on this podcast say time and time again, you know, it's easy for someone to hide behind yeah. a high alcohol, hop to shit beer, but the people that you know, the people that are making the good beer, the ones that are making those 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 lagers and those pilsners that that are making them well, and that's that's what you're 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 out there trying to discover. And that, and that was going to be my point. It was like I had a pilsner from like my buddy gave me from like Marsh Brewing up in like New Hampshire, and I was I was sitting on it because I'm like it's a pilsner, like I'm not ecstatic drinking. I opened this thing up, I'm like it tasted like a pilsner right out of Germany, and I was like this is fantastic, like. You you really can get appreciation. It's just that that's not what I'm drinking every day. That's not yeah. the stuff because again, it's like crisp. I get that, and the quality like when you have a good pilsner, it is fantastic. But 
you know, it's just that juicy, hoppy stuff. I mean, it's just it just doesn't well, go away. Well, the best thing is I don't have to worry about them running out because typically, typically, if there one of my go. favorite yeah. breweries is tapping a Pilsner, it's going to be, gonna on be there for a while. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's good for me. Man, there's nothing anyway. wrong with beer that tastes like beer, you know? You know oh, what absolutely. I mean? Like, absolutely. Absolutely. So it was an, uh, uh, kind of a jump off to that um, and something we do as far as on our tours, uh, part of the, the trivia slash history. Does everyone know where the first lager in America was made? Oh, crap. I actually oh, did know this at one point. We like just talked about this. Uh, Lauer. It's really, really it not that far from here. Yeah. Was yeah. It yeah. It was La- no, it wasn't Lauer. It was no, a different guy. Lauer. No. Brewery but there's a town. street named did, after him. Surprisingly, it's a German name. Yeah. Surprisingly. Uh, I literally just had a conversation about The first this. lager. We've talked about this on the show before. In America I've was seen made the sign too. This was about. Uh, I think this might have been in like a very here, early. Not far. Yeah. Happy fun time. John game. Wagner. John. Yes. Yep. Yes. John Wagner. Isn't there a st- is there a street there, name? Uh, no, there's no? no street, but there is a there is a sign. Okay. Like, so, um, it's in Brewery Town, which if you want to venture there on your own in the nighttime, then Don't. more power to you. But uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, it's I mean, and the history of Brewery Town is like just super interesting too. I mean, they you know they used to say the the streets of the, of the like they they smelled like bread as you walk through yeah. back in the day, and it, it's just like beer history is just a really interesting concept because there's just so much turmoil within it because you know you have everyone coming, all these Germans coming from. Uh, Germany, Germany. Thank you. Yeah, I know. And uh, they're settling, and then wow. World War One happens, and then there's all of this anti-German sentiment right, that right. kind of ruins the beer scene and everything mm-hmm. like that. And then something else happened. It was like World War oh, World War Two. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. That, yeah. That wasn't yeah. great that either. That Although uh, one of those cases where the sequel is better known than the original. But that's true. Yeah. That is absolutely true. Philadelphia yeah. though is chock full of beer history, yeah. and as far as um, the United States goes, and that's one of the things we like to put out to our guests especially people that aren't from here is we like to let them know you're you're in literally the cradle you know they call it the cradle of liberty which is where we came up with liberty brew tours Mm -hmm. but we're also the cradle of brewing before Mm -hmm. prohibition philadelphia was the beer capital of the united states and in brewery town especially that's where a lot of the beers were made. A lot of the, the first lager was made. That was a little liberal with that statement as a history nerd. That was a little liberal. Okay, shut up. <laughs> well, um, actually, and we and we and, you know we we thrive on you know when we go to Philadelphia Brewing Company. If you don't know about Philadelphia Brewing Company and the building they're in, they're in the old Wise Broad and Hess Oriental Brewing Company that building facility. Awesome. It's, it's their it's their bottling. It's their old bottling plant. It's a pre prohibition building, and mm-hmm. that they've repurposed now for brewing in. The modern time. Same thing with St. Benjamin Brewing Company. Yep. Yeah. They're also in the stable house of the Theo Finknauer Family Brewery. And to me, like, even if they're only repurposing an old horse stable, as if it's part of an of an old of a pre prohibition brewery complex that mm-hmm. once made Philly the beer mecca of America. That's really cool. And the fact that they were able to do that in that building. like Just what they've done with that neighborhood since they moved in. Do you remember the first time oh, you yeah. went there? It was yeah. frightening. Before it's they were open to it's the still, public? It's still frightening it's now. Less it's not frightening. nearly as frightening as it was when they first started brewing there. <laughs> but the, like, the big draw there, too, is the graffiti wall across the street. Yeah. Yeah, constantly awesome. That was the birth yeah. of Happy Fresh. Yeah. Oh, that's Happy Fresh. Also, fun fact, Rich's uh, Facebook profile picture is from Philly Brewing Philly, Company. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to make him make this his new profile picture. But he's <laughs> not yeah, stick man, stick rich, <laughs> stick rich. No, and to uh, correct correct Mike on his uh, brewery t- uh, in like pre uh, basically Revolutionary War during that period, uh, Philadelphia was the um, they were exporting the most beer out of any uh, city in the new colonies and stuff like that. And it was a, it was a beer mecca for a while, but uh, again, I mean, w- with with everything that happens, I don't know if. Uh, it lasted to What's the correction, you know? asshole? If it was, it wasn't like well, up you until said Prohibition. Brewery town, and he said up until Prohibition. No, it wasn't Brewery. Yeah. It was Philadelphia. No, I said the Philadelphia whole. in general. Did I not? Or you said I Brewery. Say brewery town. You said in Brewery town. Um, so, Sean, what are we drinking? We are drinking uh, Wolf Songs. So, the story from ah. the, the French uh-huh. brewery. Ah. Um, this is a, I guess, a New England style IPA brewed with uh, citra hops and mosaic. So, you're gonna get the classic like uh, grapefruit uh, from the citra, and then like blueberries. And juicy fruit from the mosaic, um, juicy fruit. and we select the the lot of the hops that we want um, over over. Uh, That's that Washington, winking. So. And Jonathan got extra beer because he's apparently special. Well, no. he cleaned toilets, so yeah, yeah he, he, the toilets he did. I told one. him he didn't have to do that, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is your entry into the haze craze. 
Yeah, it's like it was funny when we first started the brewery. We're like, we're just gonna do all saisons. I don't want to yeah. like all I want to drink is dry beers, and then we kind of had to listen to it. The customers in the brewery. Yeah. I remember that when you opened up, it was mostly saisons. Two saisons and a porter. Yeah, like the dumbest that opening. That sounds like a Beck song. Yeah. <laughs> Two saisons yeah. and a porter. It was not the but we had we had to open like we were just like run low on cash. Uh, yeah, you know, the credit card was high. I was like we have to open. <laughs> we've heard this story before. It was not yeah. the strongest <laughs> opening. Um, but since then we've we've changed the yeast. We've changed everything. Um, yeah, we've tweaked a lot of stuff, and, we, and, and to this day we constantly. Um, tweak as much as possible and we, we dump a lot of beers but it's I, I always say is do we learn something was it for the better you know yeah. and if we did then we, we should keep, keep doing that yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, I don't think enough people look at it that way well and if nothing else you should never serve a beer that's going to hurt your reputation never yeah. I because always pour 10 out of 10s that's why I tell my yeah, brother absolutely. when we have that conversation is it good enough I said is it 10 out of 10s oh these, says, no. these are 10 out of 10s well I, I think they are I mean <laughs> if, you know, I, going on <laughs> tap just going yeah. on tap that's probably yeah. not the case yeah. but um that's why I don't read reviews. Uh, are you guys doing antiquing again? I know that's like one of yours. Okay. Yeah. I liked yeah. that one. That was yeah. that's a good beer. It's like their yeah. signature saison. So I yeah. remember that one. Yeah, that was good. The problem with antiquing is that uh Simcoe Hops taking a little bit of a dive. If anyone didn't understand what that was, this would be the most hilarious conversation. That's ever, true. By the way. That's true. <laughs> but the Simcoe crop is taking a little bit of a dive, so it's kind of a loss. Remember when you used to, used to drink a Weyerbacher double Simcoe? It was like a mm-hmm. pine yeah. tree and then you know. Uh, Simcoe's not as pine forward anymore. It's a little more citrusy. Mm. It's lost its kind of pine edge. Um, so it's kind of hard to find the right Simcoe. When we first opened, we had that right Simcoe, and it's been harder to find that one uh, as the you know years have gone by. So that's why we've um, struggled to make antique in the way we wanted it. Mm-hmm. There's a really nice flavor in the back end of, of this beer, and... I like this a lot more than other New England IPAs that are out there because it's not well, like... it's also not opaque. It's well, yeah, more there's translucent, that, yeah. so I so appreciate it. So there's that. a lot more that it has to offer because the other ones are just kind of like, here's New England IPA, yeah. super yeah, over the, the top like of happiness and everything else. But no, this like has a character to this it. This is definitely on the fringe of the style as it is now. Yeah. And I think... I think uh, the, but the, in a very good way. In a good way, yeah. And the idea of the New England I, the IPA has been bastardized because now like people are just throwing that onto yeah. a beer and it's just like, okay, w- so what is a New England IPA? New England style IPA anymore, you know? Is well, it ju- it, it well apparently you- it's been labeled now. Although uh, it's the most, yeah. the most oh, it's vague the beer description. style description yeah. ever, yeah. but it gives you the it gives you the style of the beer without, like you guys said, it's it's very um, opaque and translucent, yeah. and it's, it's not you know, a milkshake it, or like grown yeah, up it's orange not, it's juice. Not it's thick. still beer. It's yeah. not a not a strong oh, milkshake. It's good. I had a, I had a beer that they offered. A, it was a it was a milkshake, and I was like, well, what kind? Who's they? It's uh, I'm not going to mention the brewery, they. Uh, but it was like a milkshake, and I'm like, okay, what? But like, what does that what does that mean? And yeah, they're like, nice style. and it was like, it was it, did it means it brings all the boys to the yard. It, it, thank you. And they're like, is my yard is better than yours? So, um, but it, it was seriously one of those things where this wasn't at yards. We need to clarify. Yeah, <laughs> better than yards. Just I feel yard, like is what she said. Not the or yards. yards. Yeah. No, and it, but it tasted like Malibu rum. And I was like, why don't you put coconut m- milkshake? And he's, they're like, oh, that's a good idea. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I'm glad I'm your like branding manager. Now. Yeah, right. <laughs> on that note, yes. On that note, uh, now that we have a beer to, to hold us over through a game, I feel like Wayne, you should do your thing. I guess I should. Holy shit, that, that was, was loud. That was loud. Can't hear anymore. Y'all we, awake now? We can't play the game. Cheers, the internet, and welcome to Happy Fun Time Games, a podcast trivia segment that is pretty tight in the back today. We are playing yet another edition of Libation or Fabrication, brought to you by our patron and recent guest host. You are a lazy motherfucker. James Lambert. Goddamn right. If somebody's going to do my job for me, I'm going to take it up for him. Um, to be fair, though, I did add my own commentary. To today's and game. he gave me a news story for you, and you didn't use it, by the way. Yeah, James is doing our jobs for us. You should take that advantage of it. That was the link on the, dr- on the lineup. I didn't look at the lineup. Thanks. All that work I do for nothing. Dan, you're a great guy. Don't thank thank you. Tell you. See, otherwise. I did my own research separately on their websites and what I knew about Amazing. the brewery. And thank you for doing that, though. It doesn't format right on the iPad. She's reason. saying you're welcome in the most loving form. Of format course. right on the iPad. Times two. You could right just, at you. I used to copy it and make a new document yeah. and format it to work on my phone. Um, anyway. I'm old school. I print it. Where were we? Cheers, oh, internet. internet! Cheers, internet! And welcome to James Lamberg's Happy Fun Time Games. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're playing Libation or Fabrication. Uh, yeah, so uh, support us on Patreon, and you may end up on the show, and you can do our jobs for us. Uh, so this is obviously the game where I would I will give you the name of something, and you have to tell me if that is a real beer or a fake beer. And we will begin 
to my left ah, crap. with Dan, and our first beer of the game is Make IPA Clear Again. Yes! Is that real or fake? Um, I want it! Oh my god, I... I want it to be real, but I think I'm going to say fake. All right, Dan is going to say that's fake, Sean. Fake. Fake, also saying fake, John. I'm just, just going to go against the grain because this is how this sh- game should go because yeah. you don't want to follow the first person. Right, more or less, yeah. But I'm going to say, no, fake. No, I'm just kidding. Real. Real. <laughs> All right, Micah. Uh, I'm also going to go with real, but that was a lot quicker than Jonathan said. Yeah, man, so. that was drawn out. <laughs> yeah, I like the. I like what it an It would answer. be the perfect name for a brute IPI. Yeah, that, that new style that's coming. I'm going to say real because I hope it's real. real. I want it to be real. Steph, real. Micah, and Make John are correct. Yeah. Yeah. It is real. It is a collaboration Steph between La Cumbra in uh, Albuquerque, no New Mexico. Way. Yeah, I fucking love that place. Yep, and Denver's Comrade it's Brewing. La Cumbre. La Cumbre. What did I say? La Cumbre. La Cumbre. La Cumquat. Um, <laughs> Make IPA clear again. It's a 7.5% ABV IPA that you can actually see through. Um, As an aside, the first comment on this beer on Untapped when I was looking it up was clear, comma, hazy, comma, I'll take delicious hops any way I can get them. Yes, clear and hazy. It was also effervescent and a little flat, bold yet subdued, overclawing, and super dry. Tell that person to Thanks, cancel Internet. their untapped account. Because uh, they're and a terrible. little flat? Uh, <laughs> How does that work? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fittingly, that check-in... Just a little flat. Uh, that check-in earned that user the middle-of-the-road badge. Nice. <laughs> and I'm not making any... For more than one reason. I am not making any Should of that. Should have earned up. the kill-yourself badge. <laughs> That's a badge? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure he's... That? I'm sure he's... Only probably. you have it. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great guy and a complete asshat. Moving on... To Sean, who is going to guess first on our next beer of the game. And this beer is I Like Turtles. Is that real or fake? That's real. Saying that is real. John, what do you think? I'm going to go fake. John is saying that is fake. Micah? Uh, That would be a big fake. A big fat fake, says Micah. Steph? I don't know. I was going to say fake, but Sean seemed really confident in his real answer. (laughs) So I'm going to say real. Going to say real. And finally, Dan? I will say real as well. Finally saying real as well. John and Micah were wrong because it is, in fact... Real is that uh, the evil genius? Beer? I was gonna say, I was like, definitely evil genius. That's yeah. the, I was thinking, I'm like, oh my god, I thought uh, the evil genius. Yeah. Beer? It's, I love lamp. Did you say they're gonna have one about the red stapler? Oh yeah, I, I think believe that's you their, have my beer. I'm very excited about that. I love that movie. Yeah, no, we're, just gonna, is... we're gonna need you to go into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. what would you say? At least we know he has the last laugh. Milton, poor Milton. This is another collaboration beer. Uh, this is by The Answer in Richmond, Virginia, and oh, Bottle Logic place. Brewing in Anaheim, California. Oh, I love Bottle Logic. The I Like Turtles is a silky, velvety 9% ABV stout with caramel and southern pecan coffee and toasted coconut. I have a random aside, if anyone's interested. Sure. The Do ancient and honorable order of turtles started as an informal drinking club between World War II pilots, self-described as an honorable drinking fraternity composed of ladies and gentlemen of the highest morals and good character who are never vulgar. I think we need oh, to bring fuck. that back. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> also, I think I'm kicked out already. Also. <laughs> You're honorable. <laughs> yeah, but I'm vulgar. But she's vulgar. Mm. Uh, just to make everyone feel old, the I Like Turtles kid is now old enough to legally drink this Oh, beer. come on. <laughs> nice. Moving on, and John is going to guess first on this one, and our next beer is Bruise Wayne. Bruise uh, Wayne? Yeah, huh. real or fake? I'm going to go fake. Saying fakety fake How fake. is Bruise spelled? Like B-R-E-W-S? Correct. Or Bruise like B-R-U-I-S-E? No, no, B-R-E-W-S. Oh, Bruise. Bruise I got Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bruise Wayne. Because Batman would bruise people. Yes. I'm going to go against my partner, and I'm going to say real. Micah is saying that Non-sexual is Non-sexual partner. <laughs> uh, but it could be sexual if you wanted it to be. You guys are related. Let's, uh, let's ease up on I'm that. I'm going to say fake. Steph is saying fake, Dan. Real. If Dan it was B-R-U-I-S-E, I would say real. And finally, Sean. You already guessed. Real. Saying real as well. Can I, John before you. Never wrong. Yeah, oh, never mind. Go Fuck. Ahead. Yes. Previously I'm mentioned on Beer Wayne. Busters. Was it really? Yes. Fuck. When was it mentioned? I, would uh, I, don't, I don't remember, I don't remember the episode. I to our podcast. We, we were in the basement. I remember that much. Oh, okay. Well, it's brewed by Breckenridge Brewery yep. for oh, Denver man. Comic Con. Oh, yes. I did a news story uh, on that. Yeah. There's, one, there's a beer called W. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne was the third beer that the brewery produced annually for the con. 
A hoppy amber ale that's the perfect beer for the playboy by day and superhero by night. No bruise, Wayne. Well, that's yes. me. I feel like Breckenridge was like the first on the gluten-free train because uh, every time I think about it, they had a they have a gluten-free yeah. Yeah. beer and they were like yeah, I they was, have been. yeah Dan's the gluten-free beer expert. I wrote an article years ago, <laughs> years ago, and that was it. <laughs> that's cool. so millennial. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. I wrote an article. <laughs> I, I, I googled it. I have a blog. Uh, if you're keeping score at home, this is the third beer that James has provided that is named after one of us. Uh, previously, we had Steph Weiss, which was real, and Man the Dan, which was fake. I remember that one. Moving on, and Micah is going to guess first on this one, and this beer is called Drippy Mango. Jesus. Um, I'm probably going to go fake on that one. Micah is saying that is fake, Steph. I would be way better at this if I listened to our show because I you feel would. like if it's... You're laughing, you totally so it has would. to be a reference to something. So he probably made it up. So I'm going to say fake. Steph is saying that is fake. Dan, what do you think? Fake. Dan also saying fake. Sean? I'm going to go real. Sean going oh. real, bucking the trend. And He's finally. like, I've had that. I'm going to go real, too. Oh, also going Just real. They had that last night together. <laughs> dripping mangoes. <laughs> Taking risks does not pay off. It is fake. That was a semi-recent reference, too. It is fakey, too. fake, fake. Yes, astute listeners will recall the phrase, Grandma's Drippy Mango, from our recent episode at Stickman. Yep. Oh, my. Yes. And since I, don't re- I remember meatballs. Stickman has meatballs. yet to employ any... And I any remember wanting to cry after that episode. <laughs> and that's true. They have yet to use any of the awesome beer names that we accidentally or intentionally give them. So yeah, every time we record there, we leave so him we an leave entire them a fucking list. Of beer list names. They never use them, so even. it's still fake. It's still fake, but who knows? That could was change. that on the list? No, I don't think it was. No, I don't think it was. No, either. I think that was a James Lamberg original. Uh, this is going to be our final beer of the game, and Steph is going to guess first on this one, and this is Hop Jizz. Wow. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I just Is that jizz even in allowed to be a beer name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say fake, but it's probably fucking real. I hope it's not real, All but I'm right. going to say fake because I'm hoping it's fake. Steph is saying fake. Dan, what do you think? I'm going to say real, but I hope it's fake. All right, Dan. It like hurt real. you to say real. Yeah, it you did. See your it body did. Language? I just wanted to because I, I think you and I are tied, so I wanted to like. We are tied. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Sean, I'm going to say fake. Also, no way fake. the federal government would approve that. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, that's I, not I, think I do. On the fake train. <laughs> I always submit them. All right, John's also on the fake train. Fake. There's no way the TTB is going to approve fake that train. Train. There's No way. Chew, chew but do they have to approve things that are just on tap in the tap room? That's true. Yeah. Oh, everything. Everything. What about like Ferkins? You know what they don't have to approve? Jeez. Beers in other countries. Oh, oh shit. Oh. It is not TTB approved because it is Fuck. made in Poland. Oh, of my God. Of course it God. is. Those Polish bastards. Yep. <laughs> made I heard they made a submarine once. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they made a submarine once. <laughs> made by a Polish brewery whose name I'm not even going to begin to oh, attempt. Oh, please try. Please pronounce. try. Please try. Pune Podziemi. Yep. Good job. Accurate. 100%. Uh, it is an American style pale ale. Of course it is. You know what else Hop is? You know what? Is? They're making fun of us. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, Hop Jizz is also a product available to home brewers. Uh, it's a hop extract for bittering without the hop leaf or pellet mess. That makes sense. Yes. To call me a purist, I but think I just like the regular juice. It comes I, mean, in, I think <laughs> they've watched American Pie one too many times. Yeah. It's a CO2 extract of hops produced by extraction of hop pellets using carbon dioxide under liquid or supercritical conditions. And it has been my experience that most jizz is produced under supercritical conditions. That's accurate. Now we're going to add up the points and see who our Damn it, Dan. big winner is. And yeah, our runaway victor with four out of five right is Dan. Boo. Tied. Boo. Tied for second I place. I was saying boo earns. <laughs> <laughs> Tied for second place. <laughs> Uh, Believe it or not, I didn't hit the button on that one. No, oh, that, that good. sounded just like the sound. <laughs> no, no, that was Micah. Yeah. Uh, Micah and Steph are tied for second place. I'll yeah, take it. with three points. Awesome. And Jonathan, you just suck. Well, Sean's got two. We, yeah, good job, Sean's Sean. Got two. Good job. John has one. And you I'm still the suck. Where's the absolute where's? worst? This is the part of the podcast where we shout out to our most generous patrons on Patreon, people who keep the lights on here at the Beer Busters World Headquarters. People like, of course, James Lamberg, who does our job for us. Well, mainly does your job. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and also, Eric Dixon. I have Tourette's. Joe Man, the one and only Joe Mansell. And he actually took out the bong and let me smell it. 
Nate Fockman. No. Four to seven inches. Sloan Peterson. Loved it. Brian Mills. No. You guys want a bonus beer? <laughs> I can't even say the name. Brian Mills. Oak Brook Brewing Company. Oh, well. <laughs> Wolfgang Von Colts. I'm getting a lot of wood. Jen McDonald. Hi, guys. Marilyn Engelman. Where's your glass? <laughs> Josh Price. Oh, yeah. Ron McDonald. Bam, bam, bam. And Victoria Miles. Just the dip. If you want to find out how Slimy you can get sauce. your name on the podcast, as well as other awesome perks, such as our bonus podcast, Last Call, go to Patreon. Dot com slash beer buster. As for now, though, we have to go pair a tab. Let's do it. Say, so Yvonne, uh, remember when I said I'd have to send away to NASA to calculate your bar tab? <laughs> oh, yeah. We all had a good laugh, Mo. The results came back today. <clears throat> you owe me $70 billion. Hey, guys. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our friends over at Secret Hopper, an innovative new mystery shopper service for breweries. It's an idea that was created out of the love of two things, beer and the experience of sharing it. Breweries are attempting to differentiate themselves in an increasingly crowded market, and Secret Hopper can help you improve your customer experience. You can see their brewery from the other side of the bar by visiting secrethopper.com slash beerbusters. Sign up to get Secret Hopped when you can find areas to improve, new areas of opportunity, monitor changes in your customer habits, and learn to grow from it. That's secrethopper.com slash beerbusters to get started today. This episode of Beer Busters is brought to you in part by Audible. Discover what millions already have. You don't just listen to an Audible book. You feel it. You can go over to audibletrial.com slash beerbusters to sign up for your free 30-day membership. Plus, you get one book to get you started. After that, each month is $14.95. You get a credit a month for a book. Good for any book, regardless of price. It's ad-free, premium audio you listen to offline with no interruptions. It's your own library to build. You keep your books forever, even if you cancel. Exclusive member-only savings, like 30% off additional audiobooks each month. There's easy exchanges. If you don't love a book, swap it for free anytime. Seriously. That is audibletrial.com slash beerbusters for your 30-day trial. No, 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 Your beers. No, 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 your beers. Hey, Steph, what do you got? I got a glossary. Oh, you got a glossary. Oh, oh, really? I love glossaries. Okay. Have you ever used glossaries? For some reason, when you said glossary, I thought thesaurus, and I got really confused. <laughs> yeah. Well, similar, similar. They're books that give you knowledge about words. True, I suppose. But uh, what, what's in your glossary? So our favorite um, homebrewing magazine, BYO. Hey, I know them. Um, recently released a Brewer's Lingo article, Dave Green wrote, about understanding yeast talk. So for all you beer nerds that go on the Liberty Brew Tour bus and you're listening to all these... Throw pebbles at each other. ...hip brewery owners and brewers talking about yeast, now you're going to know what the fuck they're talking about. So I'm going to give you five phrases that are, or groups of words that are related to yeast that you need to know. Got yeah. it? There's going to be a quiz afterwards. Oh, no, I've already it's failed. Not, it's not going to be matching. So first, wort attenuation. Yes. During fermentation, yeast are attenuating the malt sugars, and brewers notice this reduction when they measure the gravity of wort and beer before, during, and after fermentation. Mm-hmm. Brewers can assess a specific yeast strain's ability to attenuate a specific wort by simply subtracting the final gravity from the original gravity, then dividing the difference by the original gravity. Each yeast strain has a range of attenuation, which is variable because different worts have varying levels of fermentability. Yeast flocculation. Is that where they clump together? Flocculation is a term that comes from the old English word flock, meaning to crowd together. Flocculation of seagulls. You get bonus points. Uh, Brewers yeast tend to clump together once the job of fermentation is complete and thus drop out of solution. So the term was applied for yeast dropping out of solution after fermentation. Different yeast strains have varying levels when it comes to their capability to band together. Some strains will flocculate almost too quickly, possibly leaving the final beer under attenuated and too sweet if not handled correctly. Other strains will most never flocculate and leave the beer with a yeast haze that is often a detriment to the final product. Let that sink in. Brewers can avoid this by adding post-fermentation fining agents to the beer that help promote yeast flock. It's flocculation. Thank you. Yeast cropping and harvesting. The term cropping is an agricultural term used to signify a batch or lot of something produced during a particular cycle. In that sense, brewers are harvesting yeast from one fermentation cycle to seed the next batch of beer with yeast. Brewers often refer to this as repitching yeast. Different yeast strains and fermenter shapes dictate uh, what specific harvesting technique the brewer will utilize in order to crop the yeast. Yeast pitching. 
The general idea is that brewers are casting or, direct, or directing the yeast into the wort. Microbiologists use the term inoculate to describe this introduction. Yeast pitching can be as simple as sprinkling a packet or two of dry yeast on the top of the wort or as complicated as sourcing yeast from a beer and growing that yeast up in multiple steps in order to ferment a full batch of beer from it. Many brewers often use a recommended number of yeast cells per milliliter uh, per degrees Play-Doh, which is the sugar level, to determine uh, approximately how much total yeast to pitch. How do you count cells? With a microscope. Like One, literally? two, yeah. three, really? four, Well, you five. count the number in, in a, a little area, area and, and multiply. And multiply by yep. that. makes a lot more sense. Yep. Okay. Um, lag period. Last one. Then the quiz. Uh, microorganisms the quiz. such Shit. as brewer's yeast have an exponential growth curve when they start to reproduce, meaning one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight, eight. and so on until it's resources 16. become scarce. Logarithmic. Uh, the lag period is Logger the time. Rhythmic. Uh, <laughs> put that on the list. That might be a beer. It might not be. We won't look it up. You can add it next time. <laughs> uh, the lag period is basically an adjustment phase for the yeast as they adapt to their new high sugar environment. The yeast are growing at this point, but not quite reproducing yet. They are readying themselves to begin the reproduction phase. So this will kind of be like foreplay, um, which we know as the growth what? phase. Spray uh, a little cologne down the pants. I was making oh. sure you were all still here. The wort is also becoming saturated with carbon dioxide as the fermentation is commencing and the yeast begin to produce CO2. The lag period can sometimes take a while, especially if the yeast pitch was low. So patience may be required. So there you go. To learn more about beer and yeast and all that good stuff, um, check out BYO Magazine. And to get a free issue of BYO Magazine, click on the red banner on BeerBustersPodcast.com. Flocculation of seagulls. Where's the quiz? I was kidding. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> it was just a threat. Boo. I was so worried. It was Quill. just a threat. The quiz ran. Is it Hopjiz? So far is away. The, answer? <laughs> the answer is never Hopjiz. No. Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! Me. Round two, fight. So, the, so, Sean, what do we... Oh, yeah, the guy that actually owns the brewery is... <laughs> do we know what we're So, no, this is Tandence. What, what um, is it? It's called Tandence. Tandence. Um, yeah, so... Um, Another It's idea. made with Waidi uh, hops. Here he is. Uh, sour sops. And uh, Sean can definitely explain it more. I just read it off the board, so... <laughs> <laughs> they were asking about the beer. Oh, uh, so it's another one of like you know like a New England style IPA with uh, Waiiti hops, which is from New Zealand, and then uh, a blend of uh, tangerines and sour sops. So mm. the name is Tendance, which is French for trends. You definitely so fruit said IPAs. Tendance. Nice. You definitely what said are t- sour yeah. sops? It's like a jackfruit, Wait, ugly is it like Tendance uh, or tan- Tendance. Well, I mean, if you say it I right, I said Tendance. So I'm the from Ameri- Philadelphia. Yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> tendance. <laughs> it's tendance. Yeah. I have never heard of sour sops before. I Either have I. And yeah. where does one purchase this fruit? So it's really funny. There's a company called Oregon Fruit Products which sells purees. And like four days before we released this beer, uh, Crime Punishment came out with like a, uh, a, a vase. That's right. Yeah. The cr- I had that. With yeah. tangerine and sour sops. So That's you buy so the blood. That's I was like, where I oh, heard it, that. Yeah. it was so much better. It was just like so much better than this one. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. This is, this is, no, I love Crime Punishment. I always say that they're, they're the uh, ARS. And to be fair... I went to Crime Punishment recently, and they're using my number one, and ARS is number ARS is number two. Uh, I think ARS is starting to edge them out. To be honest, mm-hmm. with they're you very know. different. Oh, they are. Though. Yeah, they but have, I mean, I love them both. But we I love, mean, yeah, we yeah, love them both. They're both amazing um, for li- for us. As, but this is this is uh, personal opinion. I mean, you know, I can have a. Personal That's not allowed opinion. here. Mike and Mike now are you very have awesome. Two yeah. people at the table. Mike, that Mike, punch Mike, you in Mike, and Mike and Mike. They're There's multiple dudes. people in this world that want to punch me in the face. Um, but no, I mean... Uh, I do on a daily basis. I, I can't see why. <laughs> this is... this is. Uh, I've had their sour sauce He's here. I think this is a little better. At all. This is a little better. Yeah. A little, little better. A little better. After all of that, a ringing endorsement. A ringing endorsement, of course. Didn't really sound like it. No, uh, Sean always says that I'm this. we're the second best brew tour uh, company. Yeah. 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 But there's only two. <laughs> Wait, so, who's the other one? We're not going to mention well, yeah, the we, he who yeah, shall not yeah, be yeah, named. Actually, I, it actually brings me back to something I wanted to ask you guys earlier. When you started in, in 2015, you said you were the only people there doing was this. No, there was no well, one else. No, we, we st- when we started, um, so if you're familiar with City Brew Tours, 
they I've done a city brew tour. Yeah, and I, I've done one too. I did one in Boston. They, Let's promote them more. Thank you. <laughs> no, did I they did do one like years ago. It was like a which one? Do they cost more or less than you guys? Uh, it's about the same. <laughs> they they started. It here. was one where we Wait. went into cemeteries. It's no. a great tour. <laughs> serious no, question. Did, are they the ones that did the the duck? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Okay, all right. Right. Tours is a I, I almost we, had you guys come. Neither of us are associated with the duck. How many people died? <laughs> they they started here. They started in Philly around the same time Too we soon. did. But they were they were existing in Burlington, Vermont, Boston. Um, well, well before we were we were even a thing here. So we we came together like we existed with them in Philly at the same time. Um, and, and li- literally, like when we came up with this idea, there was no one else, and then. Yeah, and now we there's like started a month before they did in Philly. Right. So there's, they're here. We're here. We're friends with them. That they're friends with us. We we know them. Um, they're good guys. But there's like eight other fly by night bullshit. Um, as far as as far as we'll say, Ooh. like, tell us how you really feel. Damn, throwing shade. Tour, like people trying to do like tours, and I'm just like, I, I watch them. Just, they're just not doing a very good job. Right. Like, no, and it's a tough thing. I mean, you, it's, it's hard because it's it's hard. We like, we put a lot of work into this the past three years. It's been it's been a shit ton of work for us to get to where we are now. And <laughs> Liberty Brew Tours, take our tour because it took us a shit ton of work to get here. <laughs> yeah, no, because we love what Ding. we do, and to get all these arse holes on board hey. with what we do. It's please make a that a thing. Please so make that a thing. Please. <laughs> I feel like your your mug club name oh could be the arse holes. The arse holes. The arse holes. No, seriously. Oh when we first That's started this, idea. we had to go to them. We had to be like, you know, because there was nothing like this in Philly. So we right. had to go to them. We had to be like, even then, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were just like, we were pitching it. And we were like, we want to do this. And they were like, what are you looking for? Free stuff? Free shit, free beer. We're like, no, nothing free. Like, no. we'll pay you, but we want to bring our groups in because we want them to discover your brewery and your beer, and we're trying to help grow your brand. And we're bringing in guaranteed money. You know, we're not. We're and we do some marketing stuff too. You know, we we promote stuff on our our social media, our Facebook and our Instagram and stuff. But we don't just go to a brewery and write like a review and say, you know, this place was really great. Like, I want to take you there. I want to take you on one of my tours, and I want to take, take you to the brewery. <laughs> in the middle. No, and, show, and actually show you how great it is, as opposed to just writing about it no, and or the, 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 singing about it. No, no, the crazy thing about Philly, too, I mean, like, in Bucks County, we, I mean, we do a lot in Bucks County because Bucks County has a great beer scene. I mean, mm-hmm. it's really big, the big area and stuff like that. But with Philly, like, when we first started, I mean, there was really only, like, five or Five breweries, which again for a major city is yeah. like nuts yeah. to yeah. think it's, about. There's been yeah, an explosion we the past couple of yeah. years. Yeah, and right. now it's like exploding, which is awesome for us because like we got in there at the right time because yeah. you know we made our connections and stuff like that. And and the real thing is, it's like we're not like business. We all have our day jobs. I, I'm basically um uh oh an alcoholic, so like I go <laughs> out, I go out a lot, and I love going to breweries. So like it was a really kind of just a like a really easy going relationship where I was just like hey I'm already here would you mind if I brought people oh, in right, here right. and stuff like that so and like everyone like most of the people in Philadelphia I mean like again being native as well I feel like gives us more insight because I'm like a dirty you know northeast Philly dude so like yeah. you know it, it, it yeah, no, I like, but I'm from the upper crust, as I like to say, no. you know. But you know, I'm, you've you been know. gentrified. Yeah, no, we always say me above and my or bro- below Cotman. I mean, like oh, above, oh, above, above, above. above. Yeah, don't yeah. worry. No, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. always say uh, like Northeast Philly. It's like all the worst parts of uh, the city mixed with all the worst parts of the suburbs. <laughs> and that's basically, yeah, that's accurate. That is, you know. I mean, but, when we started doing this, you know, we went around me like me and you, or we just or, go to breweries. Me and, and your brother we went around the breweries, and I mean, I, I would say, you know. Sean, you guys weren't even open at the time. You, I, I don't even know if this was even a thing, but you know, when me and John and me and Jeff would go around, we you know we went to Naked and the and the gang at Naked, like Brian and Jim and them, they were they were very open to what we were trying to do, like Broken Goblet. They were you know Mike and Bubba and Jay. They were is Mike Halloween or Christmas? Oh, he's uh, definitely Mike's, Christmas. Mike's he's Christmas. Christmas, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mike's Christmas. Jay, Christmas. Jay, Jay is uh, Jay Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Mike, Jay Mike has, is a, Halloween. has a sincere love for Christmas. Halloween. That's how you remember. <laughs> oh, also, Christmas. Broken Goblet had one of the Christmas <laughs> best Christmas years I've ever had. That Santa sleigh was... Oh, I, I love I Christmas, too. It. That, was actually, that was amazing. Um, I, I do Wait! Christmas lights I have been house. waiting for a chance to ask you about this. Uh-oh. Speaking of Christmas beers, 
The salted caramel chocolate yes. stout. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, the can's right it? up there. You can yep. sniff it if you want. Yeah. It's, it's empty, delicious. though. It's very sad. It's empty, yeah. Um, can you, like, for 30 seconds before I let them talk again, talk about that beer? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's not a... It, like, li- we used to live in uh, lived in Lyon, and we'd go to this ice cream place, like, every... My, my Well, she's my wife now. It was my girlfriend at the time. Would go to this ice cream place every Sunday, and they had salted caramel chocolate, which is not, like, a novel flavor combination. But at, well, at the time, for us, it was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, why are there no beers that are made with this flavor combination? And from then on, um, we've been trying to make that beer or that flavor in, in beer form. So it's it's been we've been tweaking this recipe forever. And part of how we make it is we you we make we make it the, our own caramel, mm, right? Really? So on a homebrew scale, it's super easy. Wait, yeah. caramel sounds like the worst beer ingredient ever. I believe it's no caramel. You, do you, you know how to make caramel? Caramel? No. caramel, caramel, you just melt sugar. Caramel, yeah, caramel, caramel. caramel. Yeah. caramel. Yeah. But you gotta like constantly. Yes. I mean, it, it'll burn. So, yes. what, at what point do you put? Do you put it in the boil then? It. it, it <sighs> yes, in the boil. And you so, just keep stirring, and I guess it would be like adding honey in the boil too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, luckily for us, um, we have two bartenders. This is Cara, but Sam is a, um, a baker, so she's mm. a trained. You know, professional, and she knows how to a bake caramel anything. Expert and yep. a lovely, as it were. lovely girl. So Dan I, I said, are, Dan and I are lifetime bakers. Nice, yep. nice. It's, it's good our, stuff. It's our Amazing. last name. Are you guys really? <laughs> it's our name. It's our last name. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't know how right to over the head. question that one. Uh, but so as we're boiling the beer, right? We had a little. Our, we brought out our tiny ten-gallon um, pot, and Sam made the caramel here. Until it got to the right consistency, and we add the boiling caramel to the boiling wort, so wow. it further caramelizes yeah. the wort. So, yeah. did, what at what? That sounds. This amazing. is going to be such yeah, a, a question on, that I don't know if there's on. a real answer to. What? Can you just imagine the smell in here when that's happening? It was amazing. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. You said you needed it to be the right consistency. What is the right consistency? Like, I don't know how to even liquidy. get an answer for that. But Super it liquidy, turns, right? It's the like color you, and the smell, really. Okay. You can't like really if, taste it because it'll burn your tongue. If I go yeah. over to Acme and I buy a thing of caramel, like, it's kind of thick. I can't imagine that plays a well. A thing of no. caramel? <laughs> <laughs> it's, ca- again, caramel, I believe. <laughs> Weren't you well, just you're advocating talking, you, for the exact opposite? Dan, just go to Acme and buy stuff. And <laughs> yeah, or we could do that and just jump it in the beer. Can I get one thing of caramel, please? But you're talking <laughs> about like like caramel sauce or syrup. Like yeah. that's been made because like real caramel will re-solidify if you leave it set, right? Yeah. 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 I thought so, yeah. Which is yeah. why she makes so it you while be, they're brewing. Yeah. Right, so yeah. you said boiling to put in there. Yeah, it's like crystal okay. meth. So it's more or less exactly. a thing. It's exactly. a thing of caramel. A thing of caramel goes into the thing of wort. So you need it to be boiling, which I'm assuming means it's it's more or less a liquid that... If you were to, it, it's like a liquid that has the caramel essence of it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, All right. yeah, I mean, it, and just, then you end you up just, with a thing of beer. Boil the water exactly. and sugar until it gets to yeah. a certain color, and, right. and it's really the smell. Once we smelled it, as it gets to a point where you could you could burn it. I'm gonna make caramel. Um, it's you know, actually really easy. It's I, finicky. I, I, I it is, but it, you gotta stir it the entire time. Yeah, it's you, real finicky. You'll, no, I like, you'll, I like you'll be like, "Fuck this!" I'm gonna That's buy caramel, ha- and then you'll throw the pot away. This I like is how what's Wayne, gonna happen. Wayne was like, "I don't know about that candy stuff, but meth, <laughs> I can teach you." On. <laughs> <laughs> so more importantly. Are you making it again this Christmas? Yes, we'll release it every so Christmas. So this will be an annual thing. Yep. So when is the actual anniversary then? The actual is December seventeenth. <laughs> okay. So we just we'll try. It. We always try and do it as close to a Saturday. Okay. And we have Mike's barbecue usually every every anniversary. So we're gonna try to get him again. Because All right. Mike's I, Mike. Not that he started here, but uh, you know he we had him here a lot. Um, I think I was here once when he was here. That was the the when we came the barbecue platter and the really good mac oh, and the cheese. The first time we came, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 it was yeah, good. yeah. That was really good. His barbecue, I mean, his spot, Mike's barbecue, is amazing over yeah. at East Patio. So. Yeah, he's a good, great guy. He also owns Tapper My Nineteenth. You guys didn't know that. Oh my god! I love oh that really? Place. Yep. Holy shit. Oh wow! All right. oh, shit. That's a cool spot. So yeah. here's a question: You were saying about distribution earlier, um, and how you're in the five counties that make up Philadelphia County. Where, like, locally besides here, can people find your beer? Like South Philly, or like, do do you distribute in South Philly, or do you want people to come here to drink? I mean, obviously, I'd prefer people to come here, but um, the you know, but the more we distribute, the more it kind of brings our name down here. Yeah. Um, I what I do is I like the bars that support local breweries. Okay. Right. So the the bars that reach out to me say we have a local beer list, like like McGillan's, like. I used to go there when I was like 22 or yeah. 23, and I kind of, you know, you get older, and you know, but they support us, and it's been fantastic. They're great people. Um, but you know, Standard Tap, mm. yes, William Reed's amazing. Um, they've been great. 
Um, in terms of South Philly, uh, my favorite bar is Fountain Porter. I think their beer list is amazing. If you haven't been, been to Fountain Porter, been. you have you to go, you have have to go to Fountain Porter. If you're a beer nerd, East go Ash to... Young. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the best mm, beer bar well, in... <laughs> it's one of the best beer bars in Philadelphia. In That's Philadelphia, yeah, hands yeah. down. Uh, hands down. Really? Hands down. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Fountain Porter? You want to go soon? Yeah. They have a $5 burger there that is just like... It's just a barbecue burger, and it's delicious. Do you want to go right now? No. No. It's not too far. <laughs> Just go. Uh, no, and that's the thing, too. Like, uh, you know, uh, what I was saying before about the breweries, I mean, the thing about Philadelphia is that we had an amazing beer scene. We, right? an amazing, we, yeah, getting, we all know that. We were getting yeah. all the good beer uh, from all around the country. So when the more of the breweries opened up, it was like the, a beautiful marriage. I mean, now we're getting local stuff as well as everything else from around the country. You know, I forget who it was, but at, at a fest or something, we had somebody on who was like a sales rep for a larger brewery. And they were saying about, like, distribution, how... They've noticed other breweries will go out of their way to get to Philly rather than like New York or somewhere else along the. That's the crazy. because they know Philly oh, yeah. is. And, and, and we'll and drink the shit out of it. Philly, you know, uh, Philly Beer Week slash Philly Loves Beer. They're you know they they have the best slogan. Philly is America's best Absolutely. beer drinking city, and it's it's amazing. Um, Maybe it goes back to the PA as an alcoholics thing. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, 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 we, we produce most barrels of beer, but it, it's really cool that. That we get a lot of stuff that a lot of other areas don't get, and it's amazing. But to me, that's sort of secondary to the local beer, the local brewery scene that's now starting to rise up out of out of all that. And we're getting a really great local brew scene, and that's that's what we want to take people to see. We want to take people to see our local brewery scene. So, do you know? Um, uh, the, the one of the biggest serial killers, uh, the one in South Philly. Wait, what? Yeah, it's yeah. Like the one over here, nice Ethan Oregon. Yeah. Oh no, no, the other one. I oh, mean, Ethan uh, Passion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tenth Never mind. Yeah. Tenth Passion. Never mind. Tenth. All right, yeah, different one. All right, but there was a serial different killer. Different serial. Oh no, he got. It, there was a. Uh, there was a prison there, and uh, John Holmes. Not John Holmes. That's <laughs> more sorry. <laughs> the ex- oh my God, uh, the H- where H- are we going? H. H. Holmes. H. H. Holmes. One of the biggest serial killers got hung. At the uh, <laughs> at that prison in uh, East Pantheon, and, and that's where Dan H. H. shops Holmes. for groceries. John yeah. Holmes is we, pretty hungry. Too. I'm, I'm, pretty no, much, over here. I'm pretty sure you learned that on a city brew tour. Just saying. No, <laughs> no, John's Damn. never been on one. Only me. Okay, so one, I never been on one. So don't get at me like that, girl. All right, and two, <laughs> I'm pretty sure right, I learned that. I'm on historically city brew tour. literate, so and I live. Okay, in so South you don't Philly. know other languages and you don't you know don't grammar, but you know. No, I know some Spanish. <laughs> Subonita. Does anyone know? Who st- does anyone know who Steven Gerrard is, or why Gerrard Avenue is named Gerrard Avenue? No. Well, isn't he All also right. like the Gerrard Music Academy that's right no. over here too? Oh, I thought no. it was. No, he, he's. A- we'll talk later. Yeah. Gerrard College, Gerrard Avenue, Butler, Steven, Co- Steven Gerrard. No, he was. He was <laughs> born in France. He was. Gerard he actually Butler. Butler. <laughs> he actually gave America the first bank bailout during the Revolutionary War, oh. and he lived in Philadelphia for a time. And he was very wealthy, and nice. he em- em- empowered um, Gerard College to be what it is. And it was a boarding school for young boys. And through throughout the um, decades, it's it's you know moved on and become a, a boarding school for not only boys but now girls and people of all races, genders, and all backgrounds. It's been become all inclusive, and yeah. the entirety of Gerard Avenue is named after him. And mm. There's a lot of great history in Philadelphia that well, yeah. is is forgotten about. It's forgotten about. It's people don't know about it. People don't care about it. Whatever the case may be, but it's there. Like mm-hmm. that, the history is there. The city was founded. And if you look at a lot of the street names, the street names are found, and even in the Northeast, like you know, Thomas Holm, Home Avenue. Like, mm-hmm. oh, there are like a lot of like uh, William uh, William Penn, like. Pen, you know, William like farmsteads like Kensington yeah, was like a family. It's, it's farm amazing. Like it's like, amazing yeah, the yeah. amount of history and the stuff that's named after yeah. family names that you just don't know about. Yeah. You, you, you use Kensington, you use Fishtown, you use all these mm. like neighborhood names interchangeably without actually knowing why yeah. they are or what they are. But that's one of the things we you know we try to go over. You know, when we're driving around in these neighborhoods, is when we're driving through a neighborhood like what historically what significance does it have mm-hmm. and uh, you know 
what does it have in relation to beer and what in relation does it have to Philadelphia? And that's, that's one of the things I think is really, really fun with, with our tours. See, and that is a selling point. That would be a reason for me to go on your tour. I want to know about all that stuff. On the, on the opposite And we do that. research. If you're like looking to drink and fuck, call me. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> No, but if I'm going to spend my time with you guys, you know, a couple <laughs> hours, like I want to, of course, you we know, do, learn you know, about the breweries and enjoy some great beers. But I feel like that's an all, another great selling point. Yeah. yeah, it is, and that's that's the uh, you know that's the the history we give. We'll sort of we'll sort of bring you into the history of like say Philadelphia Brewing Company. We'll I'll give you sort of like a Cliff's Notes version of what they're going to go over, and then when we take you in there, they're going to take you on a full tour. They're going to give you the full Monty. They're going to they're going to tell you everything there is about to know about that building. That's not us for to tell. That's not for us to tell you, but we can lead you into that and give you a lot of um, lead up information to that, as well as you know Saint Benjamin and a lot of uh, a lot of other historical facts, beer trivia, beer knowledge. We you know we do fun. You know we do. Music, games. Uh, no, the, the other thing, too, I mean, like, you, you can't, like, kind of uh, subtract, like, you know, so Juan, uh, the guy that takes the photographs is, like, our designer and stuff like that. I mean, he grew up in Fishtown. Like, we grew up in Northeast Philly. Like, you're getting a real Philadelphia experience. Like, I was at the 2008. Whether you want it or not. Whether you <laughs> want it or not. The uh, 2008 Phillies parade dressed like Green Man. Like, we have experienced, like, everything. We are. I might have high-fived you. Huh? I might have high five. Yeah, there, oh there was a few. There was a few. I hope you washed your hand. Day. I hope yeah. you washed your hand. But I mean, again, Not since if, then. if you if you ever want a real Philadelphia experience, like. Again, if you win it or not, it's coming for you. All right, so uh, we've talked about all the tours and everything and how amazing they are and how you're going to learn stuff on there while you're, yes. you're enjoying good beer. So if somebody wants to book a tour, where do they go? www.LibertyBrewTours.com. Okay. Um, and then if you ever have any questions, we do have, like, uh, I guess I'm behind the times. because uh, My space is dead. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, I guess I'm, one friend. I, I correct that. I'm a forward in time where, like, I, we have a burner phone, so we do have a phone <laughs> number. And it's like I hold it all day. The phone number's listed on the but website. If you definitely call email it. us. Email us at info at liberty. Info. <laughs> <laughs> I think they know. They info know. at ladies. Do. Ladies, we did you hear some, that uh, tongue listeners. action right there? <laughs> info at doobly doo. <laughs> yes, they also <laughs> heard the part earlier where you said you're getting married in September. That is true. <laughs> but again, you know, maybe it doesn't work out. You know, uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God! No, um, it will. I was just joking. I'm definitely, joking. definitely joking. cut you that out. You know. Info uh, at LibertyBrewTours.com. Uh, no, yeah. Contact their booking agent, Bob Bob Blah. Yeah, Bob Blah. Bob Blah. 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 You have John J O N at LibertyBrewTours.com. Micah M I C A H at LibertyBrewTours.com. I- any one of us, you can reach out yeah. to us. So roundabout figure, how much does uh, if I want to bring thirteen people with me to go on a tour? Roundabout, how uh, much am I looking at? Hour All right. So tour. when we when we talk about pricing, we we charge for our standard brewery tours, and we're talking city, we're talking suburbs. Um, you know, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. It's ninety five dollars a he person. He can't do math, so I'm it's just all inclusive. It um, and that includes all the beer, mm-hmm. and we also do a sit down dinner, lunch or dinner at one of the at one of the stops. Whoa! Right. Yeah, we have a, we have a full meal. It's not like a bullshit like you know s- the chips and salsa. We, we you know we sit down. We <laughs> actually have chips and salsa. Plus, so, we have uh, Philadelphia pretzels on the uh, bus as well. Yeah. Oh. Philadelphia pretzels and yeah, and that's, bottle that's water. crucial. That we was always the and uh, 100% and from the beginning. And Hall and Oats. And Hall and Oats, not to be forgotten. Okay, um, of course, nice. you ain't Hall and Oats, you ain't boys. That's for man. our standard brewery tour. I'm also um, we've also just created a new tour offering, and I'm trying to find some um, activity based tours that I'm that you know that we're gonna try and do but um the one that we're pushing now is called axes and ales where i saw that on the site yes, yes. we I go literally to literally been trying to ask him about that for the last hour yeah. oh my god yeah I, I was i didn't know if we were Longest ever get there. Tangent ever. yeah we so go to um urban axes urban right? axes yeah. 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 urban axes and fish town it sounds like the worst idea ever by the way no, no you do that before no, we go there first before so the drink okay, it's the okay. best before the drinking okay we so, go there first fair enough. and i'm also getting ready uh, i'm in the works to pair up with bury the hatchet in salem we're gonna do an er, we're gonna do an axes and ales philly we're gonna do an axes and ales bucks county oh and that Montgomery one's county. i mean so, that one's perfect because that's right yeah right around in, uh, uh, naked 
We yeah, passed that when we went up there. It's between Woodhaven Road and Byberry yeah. Road, right there. Where um, like uh, when you make that awkward turn that looks like the highway should yeah. still go on, the, but not. It's, it's where the beer boys used to yeah. be. B O Y Z boys. Yeah, of beer course. boys. Uh, of course. Noise yeah. And just everything is just included. Slam. It's one hundred twenty-five dollars a person. If you have a bachelor party, bachelorette party, birthday party, corporate event, um, any kind of like group outing you can think of, it, we this should would be have perfect. our next corporate event there. Oh, our next corporate event. Yes. <laughs> yes. Next week. Let's do it. Um, no, that's, that's I can really take, cool. I can, I can take up to, you know, we say, we, we give like the 13, 14 people as kind of a roundabout figure, but we can take, we can take as many people as you realistically have. I mean, yeah, you know, if you're, you know, if you have like a thousand people, I don't know if I'd be able to accommodate that, but you know, we, we can, we can get quite a few people on board. Just, and we can do that. We can do that. We'll, we'll, figure yeah. we'll figure it out. Yeah. The, the axes and ales thing is really good. I, I actually ran a, a uh, we ran he pulls a, up uh, with a 747. Yeah. A guinea pig, sort of a guinea pig test with my brother-in-law and his fiance, where we did um, two van loads. We had like twenty-five people. We we did the uh, urban axes. Uh, we took them to the tube. We took them to the St. Benjamin for lunch, and then we went to John's butt vehicles. for butt beers. Aircraft carrier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep going. This is awesome. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> and, and, and we went to another brewery and had more beers up someone's butt. Whoa! Whoa! No, Star Destroyer. Uh, uh, so the urban the, the we, axes we, and two point seven parsecs. Yeah. No. No. So the urban axis thing is like a new thing. I mean, the axis thing has been growing in Philadelphia. I mean, there's a few spots, but I mean, we've been really getting hit with a lot of people that want to do both of brewery tours and axes. And again, throwing axes is fun as shit. Like I understand it as well. Um, but the I, d- I don't. <laughs> I will straight up admit that I it's, do not. Have you done it yet? Like, nope. It's, oh no, it's, it's so fun. much fun. Yeah, I, I mean, did you, it once and know. I was it's I great. was hooked. It was, it's so much fun and like, literally you just hang out and you throw axes. I don't trust myself it's with this. Okay, so, so here's here's the thing, and this is and then like six stay the fuck yeah. home. No, so no, it's <laughs> it's not an axe in this like like it's not like a knife. It's a, it's a hatchet. Yeah, it's not. It's not a knife. It's much more dangerous. No, it's not. It's trust me. It's when I did it, I was like, I want to hear Sean talk for a second. What, okay, Sean. What are we drinking? Yes, so I was going to ask that. We, we've we been delivered another beer. I didn't realize we had another one that was coming, but I'm pleasantly surprised. We are drinking Equal Knots. Equal Knots. I see what you did there. Wow. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. So the primary hop that w- is in this is uh, Equal Knot. Mm. So I couldn't think of a name, so I was looking at Equal Knot, and I saw the Equal Knots. It's perfect. Um, so it's 7.5% um, in the New England style uh, with e- Equal Knot, Amarillo, and Citra. Um, and we use uh, something called lupulin pellets, mm-hmm. which is where... What, but not hop jizz. <laughs> no, no, definitely not that. <laughs> um, but uh, lupulin pellets is where you just separate the like the grassy part from the lupulin mm-hmm. part in the hop, and then it's basically just concentrated hop flavor. Yeah. Um, so this, this beer is much more intense than the other beers that we've had today. So uh, can you explain more about the uh, lupulin stuff? Because, I mean, I see that all... Over the place with like dogfish head and stuff like that, like uh, Loopaloo and like, uh, what does it actually do to the beer that like has it's, a difference? So it's basically concentrated hop flavor. So, um, so my hop union first came out came out with it. They're using powder called yeah. Loopalin powder. powder. Yeah, and so they were just freezing it, uh, freezing the the hop right, and they were separating it. So they freeze the Loopalin packets, which are at the bottom, and separate it, and they were cryo grinding it in the powder. Mm-hmm. And they're giving that powder to breweries. Breweries like us, we could use it easily mm-hmm. um, because we don't have large tanks. Yeah. The larger breweries, like you know, Dogfish Head and Victory and Stone or whatever, couldn't use it yeah. because the powder would just sit way at the top. Yeah. So what Hop Union does now is they pelletize it. Right. So you do add that at the end of the boil? End of the boil and dry hop with it too. Yeah. So Whirlpool and dry hop, that's what most people are doing. And Equina is, is a very unique hop. Um, you boil with it, it, it releases way too many pepper flavors. Mm-hmm. If you dry hop with it, there is some pepper in here, but bit, yeah. way at the back end. Right, for, right, yeah, right. it's a very, very unique hop. No, it's it's always funny too because like when I'm on brew tours with people, they they're like, I don't like IPAs and stuff like that because it's too bitter. Because when I had this earlier tonight, I'm like, oh man, like the back end. Well, you've had now 15 like, beers already. I also yeah. The, besides that, but I mean, I always see the three sip rule. You have to have three sips, even if you because again, you have to get your palate used to it. You have to take the second sip, and by the third sip, you'd be like, oh wow, this is uh, pretty good. I 100% disagree with you. 
I what think about? you truly need to have an entire pint to appreciate a beer. Oh no no no! I meant I meant uh, when you like don't like a certain style. No, I, yeah. I I agree with you. No, I meant like when people are like, oh, I don't like that beer. I took yeah. a sip of it and I hate it. So uh, we talked about how you can get uh, in touch with Liberty Brew Tours if you want to learn more about Brewery Arse and come and try their amazing beers here on Pashyunk Avenue in South Philadelphia and walk to Wayne and Dance Place while you're here and knock on their door. We got a futon. Um, yeah. the we will not be divulging our address. I will give you. Yeah. I, will, I will give you. Address, Don't worry, guys. I will uh, find it out and I'll put it on the Email Liberty website. Brew Tours and yeah. we'll, send we'll, it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> tell you where they live. That's Call us at 805 991 Beer. The brewery uh, tap room is open Wednesday through Sunday. Um, and you can find all the details and hours and all the information on releases and all that fun stuff on their Facebook um, page, which just search Brewery Arse, which is spelled A R S if you haven't figured that out yet. Is, Thanks, is the John. website just breweryarse.com? Yes. Okay. You have a good grape can release coming up on June 13th, so when this episode airs, the beer will be available. Yes, so come, come here it. and yeah. grab some cans. Check, Any check, other check big events or releases coming up after that? I mean, that's it. Philly Beer Week's coming up, but it'll be... That'll be going by yeah. the time we'll, we'll yeah. 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 uh, it Probably the best place is the your Facebook page. You guys are pretty active on Instagram, too, oh, yeah. so check yep. the social medias, and you'll get all the, the latest info about their tap list, their awesome Pennsylvania-shaped chalkboard. <laughs> yeah. First of all, do you want to give a shout-out? Who made that? Sure. Uh, my buddy, uh, Joe Kosovar, uh, who is a hobby wood maker, uh, resides in Harrisburg, so if anyone has any interest, cool. uh, he can build so whatever can, you want. Cool. Uh, like contact him and he'll make me one yes <laughs> I, I was drooling over that chalkboard <laughs> it's, when I came in. it's pretty awesome. sweet right it yeah, is yeah, pretty yeah. Awesome. I like it was i like it very talented i'm sort of obsessed with things pennsylvania is a like good shape for a for a chalkboard it is a great shape <laughs> it is. It's, very it's, very long it's crazy yeah. like it fit exactly, exactly where we needed it yeah yeah, yeah. it's awesome i'm very impressed uh, i feel like like, like can idaho I wouldn't make a good chalkboard no uh can i massachusetts would make a good chalkboard yeah yeah. Hawaii. So would Wyoming. <laughs> Hawaii would not make a very good chalkboard. Alaska, Everything's Alaska bigger would make in, a good chalkboard. Everything's bigger in Texas. Everything is Texas bigger in Texas. would make a good chalkboard. Yeah. Okay. Kansas would be like the perfect yeah. chalkboard. It's literally. Oklahoma. Actually, Tennessee yeah. would be a really good Florida. Florida. chalkboard. Florida. Florida. If you want it to look like a penis. Tennessee. I just wanted to say. That's where I'm from. Um, yeah. I, you know, we talked about me and Micah and stuff like that. But uh, Real you Hero guys, yeah, in our company today. is our, our buddy Juan. Like uh, my buddy yeah, Juan. He's the, like, yeah. He literally is an awesome dude. And I just want to give him a shout out. Aww. I told him I would because, you cheers know. the one. He's, he's the, the quiet one. Let's now. give him a yeah. cheers right here. Yeah. So just say he's the quiet one. Cheers, Juan. Juan Gisto. Juan the quiet one. Juan Gisto with the Misto. He's a professional photographer, too, right? Juan Tough Super Talent. There we go. Photography. There we go. It, wait, is that real, or are you making that up? No, he just made that up. So. If you have uh, a photography needs, it's uh, Husto, uh, J-U-I-C-A-E-S-T-O-19 on Instagram. Check out his work. Will cool. do. Awesome. Well. 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 It was well. a lot of fun. This was a lot, it was still, a lot of fun. We still did the last call. Was it, though? Yeah. It absolutely was. was. If, uh, if you want to be part of the last call, remember, patreon.com slash beerbusters. But uh, even if you don't want to be part of that, which you should anyway, that's a whole thing, but uh, go to... Uh, Twitter and the Instagram at Beerbusters. There's beer bu- beerbusterspodcast.com, facebook.com slash beerbusterspodcast. We might have a Google Plus. I don't know. No, we do. It's, no. No, it's no, a thing that do don't away. do Google Plus. <laughs> yes. And of course, the phone number 805 991 beer, 805 991 233. Don't forget Patreon. Seven. Don't forget to rate and review us on your podcast application of choice. Yes. That'll that'll help uh, help this train keep rolling and keep growing. Uh, it was a lot of fun tonight. Seriously, guys. Yes. Thank you so yeah, much for everything. It's oh, really cool awesome. down in here. It really is. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I yeah, my ass off really down, yeah. And, and like, I want to like shout out to Sean, too, because like, you know, we're mooching. Me, Liberty Brutors is mooching off of him, too. So, you know. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, he's, again, been nothing but awesome to us since he started. And I'm, I'm just, getting that impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're, we're happy to finally get here and promote your brand, no, yeah, uh, Sean, because all, th- all three of us, it's, it's not often that all three of us have been to a brewery multiple times before yeah. recording. Usually the two of you are like, oh, we've never been there. And I'm like, oh, I've been there because I'm the one that usually travels. So, But you are uh, the lo- the closest brewery to uh, yep. Wayne and Dan. Yep. This, and this we've is all our been here many hole. times. So nice. it's really nice to, to spread the word. Yeah, and, appreciate uh, it. And that's why I was Hopefully really excited. You know, that's why I was really excited to have you guys um, come here because you've never been here, and um, it kind of helps us. We've out. never recorded. Never, right. you, I'm sorry, you never. You've never. Beer busters have never. We've recorded. consumed you've alcohol been here, here a zillion many times. times. <laughs> According to I, William Dan, I, been, I don't know where they've I am. stumbled out the door drunk <laughs> and uh, pl- uh, you know splattered on the curb uh, numerous times. Whatever. 
Um, you know, we want to give a shout out to all all of our brewery partners that we work with. You know, um, and I, I, we've named a bunch of them off. You know, Bucks County, <laughs> Montgomery County, Philly. Thank you, thank you for giving us a chance. Thank you for our, our you know seeing what we do and seeing the value in what we do and helping us out and helping us help you. And if there are any breweries out there that you know want to want to work with us, let us know. Hit, hit us up. Do it. Know. Hit it. Do it. Don't yeah. listen to hit this the podcast. Hit the hit well, the that, uh, the that brings us to the end of another episode of Beer Busters. And uh, it seriously was a lot of fun here. Uh, the beers were great. I mean, I want to do a Liberty Brew Tour now. Uh, listen to some Hall & Oates and eat some pretzels on the damn van. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Learn some history. Learn some yeah. history. Of course. I don't want to throw any answers. Dan, your though, kiss sorry. is on my list. <laughs> All right. That's what wow. I like to hear. Uh, well, Sean, thank you for having us here. You're welcome, guys. Hosting no, us for coming. And awesome. providing uh, the you. libations. Of course, to you guys from Liberty, thank you very much. Uh, well, there's a lot of time left to go that I have to vamp. Anyway, you should, my, you should have a shorter outro. I should. Maybe one of these days. My name is Dan Baker. I'm joined by my co-host and brewologist. Steph Huffman. And the Demented and Fermented. Wayne Baker. I vamped too long. No squids were harmed here. We'll see you next time. Bye. I'm surrounded by arseholes. Keep firing arseholes. <laughs> Keep firing arseholes. <laughs>